everybody. We are live here at Glenn Martin Hammond's office. We got Coach Kevin Keithley to my right. I'm Daryl McCoy, and we don't have the maestro. The maestro is hard at work right now, working on water lines, Coach. We got Coach May on the boards with us. Right, listen, Daryl McCoy, we're digging, digging, and digging some more. We're, you know, it, the grind station is a pretty big deal. We said we got to make it all the way down US 23. So listen, you got out, I got out. Uh, the maestro, he's taking care of some important business right now. Man, oh, man, we wish he was here. But we do have Coach May. Oh, yeah, he's producing the show, uh, and uh, he's a wealth of basketball knowledge. Coach May, in a matter of two and a half, three months, he's worked himself up to the big show. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Uh, big time. Yeah, the, uh, but the maestro, Thomas Rainey, is, uh, he's my landlord. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, because I didn't. Turn the water on a little bit. The maestro is mm. uh, under the underneath the house somewhere, getting all muddy and dirty, mm. and trying to get some water pipes. Man, oh man, Daryl McCoy, zero <laughs> degrees outside. The maestro having to go underneath and get some things done. But if anybody can get it done, it's the maestro. It's been a uh, couple of weeks since yep. we've been here on the grind session. We took last week off, yep. Yep. you know. But uh, guys, we did have for you folks that don't remember, we did have um, a special TikTok yeah. uh, road show uh, yeah. coming back. We went and watched Link Academy versus Huntington Prep. Coach, was there a bigger show in this? Has there been a bigger game in the state this year? in that game on Sunday. Listen, uh, as you said, Daryl McCoy, road tripping with Coach Keithley and the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, Daryl McCoy, and uh, we broke it down for you. But listen, that Link Academy uh, Huntington Prep game lived up to the hype. And then I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, and then some, Daryl McCoy, the, the unbelievable performance by one Jasper Johnson was one for the record books that they'll remember for a long, long time. Across from a set, Coach Calipari uh, set, Hubert Davis set, uh, Michigan State, Missouri. I mean, you name it, they was in the house watching this. And then on our side, we was rubbing elbows with Reed Shepard, with Antonio Reed. I mean, all the big names was in the house for that one. And uh, Jasper Johnson come out and listen, Darren Peterson's our guy. Yeah. You know, we cover him each and every week, you know, but... Uh, that was a tough show, and you know yeah. Jasper Johnson come out and showed why he's the number one ranked point guard in that class. Darren Peterson, number one ranked two guard. I actually beg to differ. I think them two should be switched around. Well, I, I love that analysis, and and Daryl, real quick though, what I love about this whole deal with Jasper Johnson and Dar Darren Peterson, Daryl, is. Darren Peterson, we know what he can do. We've watched him drop 30 after 30 after 30 point performances, and, and I don't, that's not the only thing he does. But what I love what Darren did was it wasn't the greatest night for him offensively. He'd be the first to say that. Uh, but what I loved, and I'm sure what Coach Cal loved and the coaches in attendance love, is he never got down on himself. He never had a bad body language. He stayed positive with his teammates. He kept eye contact with his coaches. He did the right things and battled through adversity while Jasper Johnson had maybe the game of his life in Wolford County. But, Darryl, uh, listen, you could switch, intertwine both those players, 1-2, one, 2-1. Two, two, one. Yeah, I'd rather have Darren Peterson at the point guard spot. And Jasper Johnson at the shooting guard spot, especially coming out hitting 10 threes, had five halfway through the first quarter. That was unbelievable. And he was getting to his spots on the floor. He knew that gym really well, Coach May. That's where he played last year before going to Link Academy. So he's a native of Woodford, uh, Woodford County. But, man, oh, man, quick, shifty, lightning quick, ladies and gentlemen. Understands where to get to a spot to get an open look. And he – the last three he hit, ladies and gentlemen, was a behind the behind, yeah, a little shimmy shake, step back with a hand all in his face, deep corner three, nothing but nylon, Daryl McCoy. Listen, I'm telling you, it was a legit show in that building. It lived up to the hype. Do not let you know that performance reflect on Darren no. Peterson, though, because it was clear that the nerves was too. A little bit. I mean, from, from the get-go, Calipari sitting there, him going against Jasper Johnson, they both been offered, and it was clear that he was nervous because he finally got a jump shot to go through. I think it was in uh, either late in the second, early in the third, and you seen him thank God. And uh, 
you know, it, you could just tell that he was tight that night. Yeah. I mean, a lot of pressure on uh, him. Tight, like you said, Coach Calipari on the sidelines, playing a team like Link Academy. And, Daryl, let's be honest, we love our, our guys over at Huntington Prep, but I, I, the rise in competition – Yep. Elevation and competition. Listen, that don't you can't just immediately go out there and boom, elevate your play when you've been coasting, winning by twenty, winning by thirty, winning by forty. No, uh, listen, it was a different animal they were facing. So you could tell a little bit as well as Huntington Prep was a little, uh, as you said, maybe a little tight, and maybe a little gassed uh, going into the third quarter. And, and you know, I mean, to their credit, they bounce back well. You yeah, know, they come back and uh, you know, Darren Pearson, mono and mono. Uh, got the better of Cameron Boozer. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, you know, I mean, he bounced back really well with that, he with that game. But, he, you know, on the way back, we had our uh, uh, Coach uh, Casey with the Little Dipper, uh, Coach K and the Little Dipper Roadshow. <laughs> Guys, we highly suggest that you uh, get on that TikTok because we got a lot of shows and stuff on TikTok that you're not going to get on Facebook. So go subscribe, go follow on TikTok. So as, uh, as we do that, then, uh, you know, we come back here and we got through the first round of the All-A. Yeah. You know, the All-A, uh, well, 14th region, they've already finished. You know, you, you have Breathitt County. Uh, yeah. You know, we're sure Bryce Hoskins has something right. to say about that. Right. When he comes on. Mm-hmm. But, but Breathitt County got the big win there. So, 15th region got through round one. Uh, right now, you got Prestonsburg Pikes will set square off at 6.30 tomorrow. And then at 5 o'clock, start things off. Martin County versus Betsy Lane. We'll go into predictions later. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, and it, it's been four or five days where we've not had any ball games because of this massive weather storm that come in here. Well, we've had some uh, dan- dandies, as they say in Eastern Kentucky. We've had some really good ones. E- even going back before that, we had the Floyd Central Prestonsburg unbelievable yeah. Uh, uh, game back and forth, back and forth. You were at, at Tulsa. Uh, where were you at, Daryl? Where it was just unbelievable within that last week before that snow came in. You were somewhere in West Virginia. I'll let you think about it, but it was an unbelievable game. Go ahead. Tug Valley Logan. Yeah. Tug Valley Logan wow. through the roof. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it was crazy atmosphere there. And then, you know, when, when the storm, we'll get into all yeah. them games, but when the storm come in, and had it snowed in. Not only did it have snow in, you know, snow started laying on the grounds on, uh, I think it was last Thursday, maybe, or no, Saturday, wasn't it? It was Saturday, Saturday. night. Yeah. Saturday yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my son's tires a little slick, you know, so uh, I told him, I said, here, I said, take, you know, my car. I said, you can go to practice. Just started uh, sticking because, you know, he just had a wreck. Yeah. You know? That's what so, I've heard. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was like, here, take this one. So he took it. Well, come back, and as most kids, they don't uh, put gas in the car, you know. And uh, so parked on the hill, no mm-hmm. gas. So I've, I've been uh, the D and D mobile has been down for a couple of days, but there wasn't enough room to get a car in to boost it. You know, yeah. You couldn't tell what was wrong with it. Was out mm-hmm. of gas, boost, what? Mm-hmm. But uh, rode it back a little bit, and. It, so when it rode back, it was in front of my neighbor's house. My neighbor politely come over and asked if I could move the vehicle because uh, she uh, don't have many winners left, and she wanted to enjoy the beautiful view. Yeah. And I told her there wasn't nothing more beautiful than the D&D yeah. mobile. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but I, I was in a situation... You know, her cars couldn't get out. Mine couldn't get out. You know, especially one that don't run. Right. And uh, there was no no option for me. Right. You right. Know, no option yeah. for me to move it. Right. And, right. Uh, so, you know, uh, that, you know, was just a case of, uh, you know, she, she got really upset over it and uh, had some choice words. But, you know, that's kind of, uh, you know, I, I learned quickly what kids these days Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 You you gonna find that right, Daryl, with the snowstorm. Everybody kind of gets on the edge a little bit. Four days, kind of been snowed in. Couldn't uh, we can't do anything. I had my own problems yesterday. Had one of our car my car stuck and and uh, my goodness, just spinning, 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 trying to get it out of the snow. Took me about an hour, hour and a half to get it out, and finally was able to push it uh, me and me and my son Braxton was able to push it and uh, get it out of the way cuz it's in the middle of the road so uh yeah this snowstorm can bring out the uh best or worst in people Daryl. 
Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, Coach Keithley's showing a little shade to growing up in Georgia there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, but no, uh, uh, came back, you know, finally things started melting off today. Coach May come up, uh, offered his assistance, getting the DMV yeah. mobile back on, and, you know, we got it rolling. And, yeah. You know, so it's, it's back going, but I made the trip last night. I was so bored. I was begging for a ball game. Yeah. I was willing to, to drive three hours away to watch yeah. a ball game. Mm-hmm. And, but luckily, Huntington Prep played. Yeah. And uh, we got to see Huntington Prep's post-grad. And I'm telling you guys, Isaiah Smith, the kid that played for Chattanville last year, was one of the finalists for the Lathan Hall Award. This kid is a premier point guard now. He's yeah. not just a shooting guard and right. a lockdown defender. This kid is unbelievable at the point guard position. I was blown away. I, I did not recognize that kid watching him play last night. I mean, he was something special. Evolved his game in that short yeah. of a time now, amount of time. Went down Daytona. You know, that's where he went oh, to college. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, he spent about a half a semester down there and come back. And, uh, yeah. Found him a home at Lincoln Prep, but you know that post grad team got a big boost from picking Isaiah Smith up. Yeah, big time uh, addition. Who did they play there? Uh, they played uh, Indiana Elite. But not Indiana Elite AAU. Not, well, Indiana Elite I, I, uh, I prep? I, 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 I don't – I think it was part of their AAU program uh, and may have been part prep because there was like four kids on there they said was still in high school. What mm-hmm. color was so their uniform? They was black. They was the Wolves. And uh, the uh, – but the, they, they had this one dude that was just – Monster that Hank Prep had no answer for him, and right. but you know uh, they ended up losing seventy six seventy five. Hank Prep did yeah. uh, to Indiana Lee, but Indiana Lee only had two guys on the bench, so you know it was a, it was a it, you know then we you know we talked about it. We made the track up to Leslie County, Betsy Lane. That's the kind of basketball weather that you're yeah. talking about. Nothing to do but getting a gym. Absolutely, this is the type of weather right now. Going back to my childhood, it's like man, this feels like. Uh, when, especially when I lived in Kentucky, this feels like basketball weather. This is my type of environment. Yep, and as uh, we've got a lot of people tuning in here, uh, Caitlin Keefley says, can't believe Dad's missing the cats. I know. Uh, Jonah Hicks <laughs> says, are you guys going to talk middle school basketball? Yes, we will have the middle yeah. school ranking yeah. the newest ones uh, coming out. Mike Perry tuning in. Uh, we we got everybody tuning in, Coach, and uh, as – we're winding down. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to save some of this other stuff here uh, as we got Mr. Hoskins coming on here in just a moment. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, guys, make sure you get your comments, your questions in as uh, we'll answer them. And then when we come back, we'll have Breathitt County's own Bryce Hoskins. Be right back. This is Bruce Walters from Bruce Walters Kia. By now, you know Kia is a great vehicle, and you know they come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. So why should you buy from Bruce Walters Kia? At Bruce Walters Kia, we're going to change your oil for free for life. And what you do with that money you save is up to you. Come check out the 2022 Kia Carnival and the 2021 Kia Sorento. Only at Bruce Walters Kia in Pikeville. Or shop us online at brucewalterskia.com. Start the new year off right by making your health a priority. Kentucky Mountain Health Alliance, Little Flower Clinic, Quantum Healthcare, and East Kentucky Chiropractic can help you do just that. We have a great staff of professionals offering a variety of services like medical, dental, behavioral health, mat program, case management, chiropractic, radiology, and lab testing. Little Flower Clinic offers free transportation for Perry County patients. Call to make an appointment, 487-9505, Quantum Healthcare, 436-0711, and East Kentucky Chiropractic, 487 487- Eight two five five. Looking for a new pharmacy? Howard Family Pharmacy offers fast and friendly service and convenient drive throughs at both locations. Craving a taste of Central America? Head to Sal Steakhouse. Sizzle your senses with mouthwatering steaks, juicy burgers, savory chicken, and fall off the bone ribs. Sal's Steakhouse, where your taste buds will thank you. Unleash the flavor at Sal's. Taste tradition, taste the difference. This is where it all started, right here on this farm. We may have grown over the years 
but we've never lost sight of what was important to us. We're continuing that tradition today, and we always will be for generations to come. Welcome back, everybody. We are live here at Glenn Martin Hammond's office, and we got Coach Kevin Keithley to the right. We got Bryce Hoskins, Breathitt, pride of Breathitt County in the house, Coach. I'm Daryl McCoy, Coach May on the boards. Coach, what about Mr. Hoskins? <laughs> Listen, you're talking about the monster in the middle, the man in the middle. Listen, uh, when he roamed those, uh, uh, that interior, uh, Breathitt County, you better believe, listen, everybody's on their P's and Q's. Yeah, he made the short trip, Bryce. You're now yeah. at UPIC. Yeah, I'm at UPIC. Yeah, I come down here. Uh, I was on the way home and uh, stopped in here. Found... How's the weather affected you? Oh, uh, well, I was supposed to be uh, back in just for school uh, Tuesday, and uh, I got snowed in. So yeah. I just now come back in today and give them a chance to, you know, clear the roads off right. and stuff. So uh, coach just said it was fine. You know, don't rush. Coming back in and hurt yourself. So. I'm um, glad to be back. Coach, we had Bryce come up and join us at the Prestonsburg Christmas Tournament, and he blew us away with his wealth of knowledge. Uh, we said we got to get him on the show. Did an unbelievable job, special analysis during that Christmas uh, classic, and uh, did a tremendous job. And, and the thing about it is, and you pointed it out, Daryl McCoy, is he's almost as if he's a historian of 14th <laughs> region basketball, especially in that Breathitt County, Owsley County area. So a wealth of basketball knowledge from this young man so yeah now that we're covering 14th region basketball uh we, we got a, a another expert here yes uh, you know i wanted to start off here uh, this segment you know talking something that we've talked about a lot here on the show but you know it's come up quite a bit here the last little bit is the crowds you know uh, everybody uh, you know brought up this uh, subject again the crowds you know a lot of people has different things to blame but you know right now you know we've seen it at the all a you know that that's something that we talked about last week was you know should they put it back in high schools now with and, and you get to play in the 14th region or you got to play in the 14th region you know how much better of an atmosphere is it in high schools than what it is say at the expo center oh i feel like gym size plays a big role into that i mean like you, you go to the Expo Center and you take, you know, 4,000 fans in the Breath of County Coliseum it's standing room. You know, yeah. 4,000 fans in the Expo Center is like, you know, half capacity maybe, you know, say it holds eight or 9,000. So, you know, you take into consideration these streams, and I ultimately think that the streams are good. You know, it, it just expands the world of basketball so much. Think about all these coaches can get on there. All these coaches from around the world, they don't have to travel to the games. They can look on the streams, which most of them will travel to the games if you're good enough. So uh, I ultimately think that the streams are good. Um, you know, 14th region games, and I know 15th region games too, the home and away games, they're always rocking. You know, Eastern Kentucky fans, they love basketball. So, you know, it ain't much like the 90s standing on the baseline games and yeah. stuff. But I have played in a few games where the, there was standing room only. So, uh, But ultimately, I think the streams are good. I don't think it has hindered attendance so bad to where it has to be addressed. Um, but ultimately, I think it's good. You know, I personally got family in Ohio and stuff who, you know, can't make it to – yeah. a lot of my games at all so they get on there and watch the streams and stuff so I ultimately think it's good I think that you know D&D Blue Sports Nation all of those streaming services have done the kids of East Kentucky a huge service yeah I, I could see coach where you know somebody like the BSN where Bryce come from you know where they do every single game and they're streaming service yeah not necessarily a media outlet right you know that, and you know people know that they can rely on that every mm -hmm. single game you know, like with us, we're a media outlet, right. so you know we're not necessarily at the same place every every right. night, yeah. and you know we we don't always promote where we're going to be. Yeah. So you know, I mean, with us, I don't think people can really say these guys, you know, cost you know somebody to sit home because you know I don't know how many times I've seen games where I didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's a big game tonight. Logan right. Chapmanville, I'm going to make the track up there. Yeah. You know, so. Well, how many times have, and you just nailed it, have you, have we intentionally not put out or promoted and said, hey, 
tonight on the D&D lineup, yeah. we'll be at Betsy Lane versus McGoffin County. Intentionally, right? So we just show up, do the game, and, and sometimes the attendance is still not yeah. where it should be. Right. And, and, and they're, like you said, we talked about this for multiple weeks now. Uh, there's a lot of variables that go into it. And uh, I think, if anything, streaming helps market, promote, and actually engages the audience more than if you don't have it. It actually brings eyes to these athletes and they become, oh, yeah. they become household names. Where 100%, yeah. Before, maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, not the same deal. Well, well here's what I think has got more to do with it is I think as we talked, you know, a lot of times now people have got these cell phones so you don't have to go to the game to see your friends. But the bigger thing is I think schools – you know, don't always do a great job of making it an yeah, event anymore. I agree. Right. You know, a lot of schools don't bring their cheerleaders. They don't bring their yeah. band. And here's the other thing. I mean, say the All-A at the Expo Center, okay, you got a uh, you know, four-person family. You know, yeah. you're going in there, you're paying $30 in tickets right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, your kids are going to want something to drink. So you're looking, before you leave there, you're probably looking $50, $60 range yeah. that you spent. Uh, how are you going to do that all week? Yeah, right. I, I mean, it, it's just tough. And even in your local schools, you know, it's tough with ticket prices now, you know. I, so I, I think that has more to do with it. And then I think the decline in population around here mm-hmm. definitely has uh, had a big hold on the attendance. Yeah, and and I think also the fragmented uh, fan bases especially in the 15th region where now consolidation, yes. right? So I think that's hurt, it, hurt as well. You, yeah. Places like Breathitt County, they're still they're still nuts, ladies and gentlemen. They're still bonkers. <laughs> Listen, they love their Breathitt County Bobcats, and they're going to make the track into that Coliseum to see them. And that's one of the things that always entices me as a coach and as a fan is, man, being a part of that Breathitt County program is something special. It takes a special type of person, even a player, to wear that uniform and thrive in it. So it, Breathitt County is still old school. Oh, yeah. um, probably Owsley County is still old school. Yeah. Um, uh, even you go down just about all the 14th regions yeah. like that. You right. Know, the 15th region, you know, I, I think is probably, you know, the most – there was 16th region that's probably the most streaming because yeah. you got, you know, my town and you got a couple more groups mm-hmm. that, and they've took and locked up exclusives yeah. with all them schools. Right. So, you know, I mean, they're probably the more streaming uh, ahead of everybody. And then I think 15th region is probably there behind them. And then I think 14th region is uh, still, you know, probably the last one to the party when it comes to streaming services. You know, you got a lot of people doing it, but you only got a couple of notable ones. And, you know, I, so I still think you get them big crowds and them big time atmospheres in yeah. the 14 region. I think it would help a lot too if they let every student in free. If yeah. you're a student of they that do that at Brother County. If yeah. you're a student of that school, you shouldn't be paying yeah. to get in any kind of event there. They got a little barcode at Breath that you come up, you just scan a student. Put your name. See, our board of education pays for your ticket. Right. That's big yeah. time. I think that's, that's awesome time. because yeah. that that was. I mean, how many how many kids just can't afford to go? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You let them in free, you're gonna. I mean. What about the idea they have on Facebook right now of having a few games during the year during school hours and having having it. kids come over? I've seen that everywhere, and me personally. I love it. I mean, imagine having the student sections of that game if the whole – everybody that wants to go is there. Well, you know? listen, you're right. And we – on the pro level, we've been doing that for a long time. And I can say in the Canadian Tire Center, by the way, seats 23,000 people in Ottawa, oh, yeah. we did a, a school day and held a game at, at 12, 1 o'clock in Ottawa, Canada, and we ended up having 7,000 kids Ooh. turn out for the Ottawa Skyhawks game. And that was a big time success, and and other places are, are doing it. A lot of colleges are doing it. Daryl McCoy, uh, a lot of D one schools, smaller D one schools, doing it at a uh, rapid pace. Now you're seeing more and more day games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I I think there's there's so much uh, goes into it, and I honestly like I, I'm not gonna sit here and say like you know streaming don't cost any, but I, I could see it, yeah very minimal. Yeah, I could see if a man just worked you know. Uh, 12 hour shift and he comes home and he's like I'm going to take a shower and then I'm going to run up to the school and watch a game I could see him saying well I just worked a 12 hour shift you know uh, let me you know sit at home so and so he's going to have it I could see that case 
but the cases that you know and you know also if it's a blowout game uh, and it's raining in football or something, I yeah. can see somebody saying, you know, we're gonna sit home and watch it there. But it's not the. I mean, it's very minimal. That in taking case how many people we draw there promoting a right. ball game well, too. There's been times that I watched a player online though and just fall in love with that guy and have to go watch him live too. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you gotta see that point of it. How many kids you see on the internet or on on a live stream and you think, man, I gotta go watch this kid who because. I mean, so I, I, I don't see it all the time. Yeah. Me and Coach seen it uh, this past weekend. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I've done it. Yeah, that there's people that travel, you know, in three, four hours to watch these kids that see it online. So, <laughs> you know, that's the big that's the big thing that people don't take in mm-hmm. case. You know, I mean, I I don't know what the ultimate answer is. You know, I honestly like you know some schools uh, have started charging ridiculous streaming feeds, and then you got some that you know. I, I, I'm not saying, listen, if you want to charge uh, streaming services, if you want to charge them, you know, fifty, a hundred dollars a game, just make it reasonable to where, you know, okay, it, it might cost us, you know, 10, 15 tickets, but, you know, that should be the price. Right. You know, so, it, you know, but, you know, and that would help cure everybody's issue if they really did think it. But, you know, I don't think it, you know, to promote these kids that you should – people should have to pay anyways, right. you know I mean, because at the end of the day, you're going in the hole to promote these kids in the schools. But if there is, just make sure it's reasonable. Well, for every negative somebody can come up with, I can point out 10 positives of, the, of the streaming. Because yeah. yeah. there's kids down in eastern Kentucky that would never be seen yep. if yep. not for Dave and Daryl. I agree. Or not for whoever. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, the streaming is definitely positive, well, in my these, opinion. Well, these small colleges don't have the funding to get out and go look at every kid they want to see. They yeah. just don't have the money to travel and recruit. Yeah. Well, co- COVID changed the game in college. Oh, yeah. And you, you, I mean, it, it was a situation. Now these programs don't have the same funding that they used to have. So, it, you know, there's not going to be, you know, unless it's an ex- like a blue chip, uh, extraordinary athlete, you're not going to have a Division One school come and watch one game in the 15th region. They might go to Lexington or, you know, go to, say, if there's a big tournament in Ashland, they might go watch yeah. where they can watch everybody. But, you know, just to come in and watch one kid, it has to be it, a really special kid. Listen, Darren McCoy, one of my first years coaching on the college level, our recruiting budget was $2,000 for the entire year, 12 months, 2000 all right, so you had to make the most of those trips, brother. So listen, uh, you're exactly right. Whether it's Alice Lloyd, whether it's U.S. Uh, Her- Campbellsville Harrisburg yes, or whoever, yeah, yeah. I guarantee you, he's not working with a hundred thousand, a six-figure budget. Yeah, it, it's it's just not there anymore, and so that's that's the big issue. And you know, I, I really hope that tomorrow night that everybody packs out that expo yeah. center because you got two great ball games there in the semifinals of the all-a tournament in the 15th region and you know for the way it's looking you know the rest of the games in the area might be canceled so those might be the only two games there yeah you know, go out pack that place out and let's get a great yeah. atmosphere i might have to walk down there and watch those games right. yeah, yeah. I, you got two great ones you got Pikeville and uh prestonsburg and then betsy lane and martin yeah. county I, I, I feel like the 15th region all the way this year is as split open as it's been in years. I mean, I see four or five teams that I, before that I could, I could see heading to Corbin, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's – I mean, that's just all throughout the 15th region. Yeah. Yeah, right now there's a lot of parity. So, uh, as uh, as we go on there, Coach, we uh, uh, took and – did you see Stephen A. and Jason Whitlock's uh, argument? I didn't see it. Yeah, no. they, uh, uh, th- there is – it was unbelievable. I, I never knew Stephen A. The quotes on Jason Whitlock. He he said at the end of the day, Jason Whitlock's one of them people that's going to have a funeral that nobody oh, will attend. Wow. Yeah. That could be a rat. Man. Yeah. It, it, it was bad, and uh, the uh, uh, a lot of people was like, "That's Coach Keithley and Daryl." <laughs> they don't realize that. Me and Coach are friends right. off the show. Yeah. Right. We just get angry. Right. Right. The, uh, but it it, uh, it brought up a, a, Man. a lot of people. The uh, uh, bringing uh, me and Coach into it, and 
Yeah, I, I, I want to uh, reiterate, the, uh, we are friends off the show. <laughs> Man. The, uh, I, not only is a lot of people going to attend Coach Keith's funeral, I'll go. Oh, yeah, that's there. what I was going to say. Uh, hopefully, uh, Daryl will be there. I'll be there for his. Yeah. Uh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. But, uh, mm. no, when, uh, um, when we come back, we're going to uh, go over the double quick players of the week. We're going to read your guys' comments. And then we're going to get Bryce's opinion on the 14th yeah. region, Coach, and the way things are breaking down. Yeah. So we'll be right back. That story is Stop by and see us at Bridge Mart in Kermit, West Virginia. We have been serving the folks of Kentucky and West Virginia for over three decades. We're right here in a convenient location on the border. We also have drive throughs great service, and great pricing. We look forward to seeing you. Here at the Bridge Mart. If you're trying to rehab from an on the field or workplace injury, come to Rebound Physical Therapy and Sports Performance in Chapmanville, West Virginia for all your physical therapy needs. For over 10 years, Rebound Physical Therapy and Sports Performance has been making sure their clients rebound in the quickest amount of time possible. That's Rebound Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. Look forward to seeing you. Looking for a new pharmacy? Howard Family Pharmacy offers fast and friendly service and convenient drive throughs at both locations. Looking for a new health care provider? Come see us at Tug Valley Wellness Clinic. We take all patients from the ages two and up. Our staff has over 30 years of medical experience. We do everything from DOT physicals wellness exams, adult and child walk-in visits, and more. Call us today at 304-236-3601 or reach us Monday through Friday. I started at Double Quick as an associate when I was still in high school and I quickly realized that there was a career in front of me. Whenever I was a store manager, I graduated college and I expected to leave about a year after graduation. I knew that this was a place that I could continue to grow, I could continue to be challenged both personally and professionally, and that's the reason that I'm still here today. Start your career today at DoubleQuick. Apply at DoubleQuick.com and start your career today. If you're injured in a car wreck, don't delay. Give me a call today, Justin Markham. Here at Markham Law Office, we will fight for you. Don't settle for a handshake and a small check from the insurance companies. Give us a call. Don't take on the big insurance companies alone. We will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Here at Markham Law Office, you're more than a client. You're family, and we take care of family. Give me a call, Justin Markham, attorney at law. We got Coach K, Kevin Keithley to my right, Bryce Hoskins in the middle here. I'm Daryl McCoy and Coach May on the boards replacing the maestro man, tonight. Man, the maestro digging digging ditches and, and fixing pipes. He's getting it done. Uh, yeah, digging ditches. The uh, uh, I was about to make a rhyme. I better not. <laughs> right. so the, uh, as uh, as we, we are uh, coming back here, you know, Coach, we always talk about uh, – you know about college we'll get into that you know toward the last segment but this one here before we go any further want to release the double quick players of the week and coach may who do we have double quick player of the week on the boys side you got Jalen rigdon pot central big week for him 34 points per game eight rebounds per game wow. and over on the girl side carly mccoy fell uh 25 and three so, big weeks for both those kids. So, Callie McCoy, one of the top scorers in the region. Uh, yeah, you, had, you had a couple of names uh, this week. You had Rigdon, 
Uh, then you had um, uh, Spurlock. Uh, you had Jacob Spurlock up here, up there in uh, Boyd County, and then uh, Braxton Keithley, uh, the young freshman at Prestonsburg, uh, has dropped thirty-one and twenty-nine in his last two games. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Uh, and 29. You know, I, you know, I knew that one. Also. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Floyd Central game. So uh, uh, two big games there, but you know it was rigged in thirty-four, uh, two thirty-four point games. Hit the buzzer beater, yeah. uh, and more importantly, maybe one. Uh, I, I don't think much was settled as far as 15th region player of the year goes because you had uh, Rigdon score 34, hit the buzzer beater, but you had Aiden Barnett drop 54. Uh, you had <laughs> so. uh, you had Rigdon went for 34 and seven against Paintsville, uh, 34 and nine against McGoffin County and Aiden Barnett, and then on you had the McCoy. She had. 30 and 4 against Paintsville, 25 and 3 against Mount View, West Virginia, and 20 and 1 against Prestonburg. So, but I, I'm with you on the player, the 15th region player of the year, flip a coin. Yeah. I've watched them both play, and man, they're both dogs. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be uh, interesting to see who comes in there. But let's read a couple comments first. Justin McCoy says, Cats are up at halftime, 47 29. Kevin Sharp says, uh, um, Bryce's cousin plays along with Sperry in Breathitt County. Yep. Yeah, we talked about that. Wes Hicks says, I work out of town when you guys broadcast the teams. Said my kid plays on. Appreciate you guys and what you guys do. Uh, no school in Pike County tomorrow, and Floyd County is out the rest of the week so far. Uh, Amanda Hicks says, Most Pike County schools let students in free. We also see Jeff Honeycutt. Yeah. says, uh, great job, Bryce. You're on a great show with two great hosts. That's right. And uh, Kevin uh, <laughs> Stepp says, schools at the end of the day should be uh, for the student athlete. I would really like to know how many more scholarships or opportunities that these kids uh, uh, are getting uh, as they continue to play sports on D&D. Mike Mullen says, I'll go uh, to games knowing D&D is having it on. I'll bring them up on my phone uh, to hear. We see that all over the gym, Coach. People with their yeah. phones listening to yeah. us while the game's going on. And uh, it, it's still, I mean, listen, I mean, I, we do a great job at what we do, but, you know, it's, we're still not going to replace the in-game environment. Right. I mean, if you're going to go to the game, you're going to go to the game. And... Uh, Sharon King says, great job, Bryce. BB was so proud of you. I think the world of those people right there, you know, even knowing them for a short time, they, impa uh, you know, Sharon and BB impacted my life so greatly. They're some of the greatest people I know, and I was I was um, honored to play for BB King the time that I did. Of course, uh, Sharon is the wife of the late BB King, and, and from what I understand, Bryce, you know this better, but and what I love is Sharon is kind of, and the breadth of county community has yep. kind of embraced her as a part of their own, which she is obviously because BB was a coach there. But even more so, she's that a lot of the games still oh, right. Yeah, and yeah. that says a lot about that commitment. It shows why BB yeah. and Sharon were so, so successful wherever they yeah. went. Uh, Miss King was she was at every single All A game. I walked up, gave her a hug before every single game. Uh, she still supports them boys to this day, and uh, it's just she she's a great person, stand up woman. BB was a stand up man, you know. Knowing him for the six to eight months that I did, he taught me so much. And um, that whole that whole regional tournament, district tournament, the whole season after Christmas, after you know we found out that he sadly passed, uh, we just we made it our goal, you know, to make him proud, to, to, to do what he would think that we needed to do. We kept his plays. Coach Moore kept his plays, you know, and we was playing with him right beside us that whole regional tournament. It was special. Oh, I always have a special place for BB King. You know, he he led uh, uh, Cameron Justice in Knott County yeah. uh, back uh, when they went to all them Sweet Sixteen. Four in a row. Yeah, and uh, you know that uh, I'm Cameron's junior senior year. I may have missed six seven games in yep. in them two years, and uh, so got to know BB really well. My former high school coach was his assistant coach, Raymond Justice. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, BB, I got to understand what a great man he was and, you know, how what what made him different, you know, than other coaches. You oh, know, yeah. he, he's truly one of the great coaches. Yeah. I mean, and nobody can ever deny that. Well, yeah. I got to watch him play in college, and he could play, too. Yeah. He played with my oldest brother at Alice Floyd. Oh, wow. And he could hoop. Yeah. yeah. Hey, he, he went to Ole Miss. For a day and, and yeah, left, and left. I, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, he, he went. Yeah, he committed yeah. to Ole Miss, played basketball, went. 
for a day, told me he didn't like it, so he went back home. Who else knows that? Coach? Man, it's just that wealth of knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Open yeah. up that right, uh, uh, the, uh, what is it? Yeah. Uh, he told me yeah. that. Safe. Uh, yeah, actually, he told me that in uh, Shelbyville <laughs> at a summer tournament. Yeah. Um, oh, what's the word? It starts with a P. Uh, open up the. Uh, uh, Pandora's box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pandora's box. Yeah. 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 The, uh, but, uh, no, you know, Bryce, you obviously led Breathitt County, uh, you know, to a Sweet 16, you and your teammates. Um, you know, went up there, uh, you know, most mountain teams, uh, you know, that's what most mountain teams do. I'm, I don't know whether, it, you know, y'all's mindset, you know, because y'all was built a little bit different, but most mountain teams, you know, once they get up there, you know, they, they once they win that region championship, they've done it. Yeah. That, that's the, what their accomplishment is. You know, yeah. the Sweet 16 is kind of the icing on the cake. Yeah. Well, we was excited to be there definitely, but going into that game, you know, it was that game. Like, we, we was focused on, you know, we wanted to beat Louisville Mel. And we, we played them hard for two quarters. They kind of – they had a little bit more depth than we was. You know, we was six, seven deep. They was eight deep. Actually, Louisville Mel plays with Shemai Gates. Antonio Gates tied in for the – Old yeah. tight end for the Chargers, his son. He, he was yeah. – uh, Oh, wow. Yeah, he committed to Eastern for football. I mean, he's a great athlete, premier athlete. The Edelman brothers, I mean, those guys, you know, Michi White. I mean, those guys can play. I mean, he, he played for Mel? Yeah, Louisville yeah. Mel. Number three for Louisville Mel. He's a lefty. And um, so, he was guarding Spurry full court, lost the game. You know, lots of stuff that, you know, we could have beat. But um, we kind of got tired. They tired us out. They did a great job. Set a sweet 16 record for three-pointers hitting the game. Fifteen. Yeah, they were they uh, yeah. were on fire early. Cole, Cole Edelin, you know, freshman that year, yeah. already offered by Jacksonville State. You know, Jack Edelin playing for the Hilltoppers now in Western Kentucky. So I mean, th- those guys were good. But you know, back to like what you were saying, um, our mindset was we wanted we weren't gonna go up there and lay down. You know, whether we won or not, you know, it was it, it is what it is, a history. But we was gonna go up there and we was gonna give Louisville mail. You know everything we had, and we did. You know, was beating them at the end of the first quarter. Hung out right with them through the first half. Second half, they you know lit it up from three. So you know sometimes ball just rolls their way. You know, so and uh, it happened to be that game. But I was so thankful to have that experience. You know, it's like a reward. You know, yeah. you, you work so hard, you get yeah. rewarded. We got to get toured through UK's locker room. Yep. Took picture beside their national championship trophy in mm-hmm. 2012. Walked on the same hardwood yeah. that they won in New Orleans. Uh, right there, you know, got to go in John Calipari's office and stuff. I mean, it, it, it was just astounding. That basketball up, that's what you dream about yep. as a Kentucky boy. Yeah, whenever yeah. you're in grade school, you know, grade yeah. school games, everybody's talking about going to the Sweet 16. Yeah. You know, I can remember as a kid going and watching, you know, the David Jones, the Trent Gilberts, and uh, like the Cameron Justices yeah. and all those guys, you know, Buckhorn even when I was in uh, grade school won it that year. And uh, just all, all those teams, you know, the big dunk that Dame Tobler had on against Pikeville, that got called a charge. Yeah. I mean, it's just stuff like that. You watch that, and it just it burns your heart up in a way that nobody else can understand when you think about what your goals are as a kid in Eastern Kentucky. I'll always remember sitting in that post-game press conference and uh, with Bryce and uh, his teammates up there and doing that post-game interview, you know, it – it, it was something I, I think all the – everybody there, you know, wanted to see uh, uh, the Breathitt County boys. You know, that's – that everybody – all the post-game interviews with Breathitt County was different. You know, all the uh, reporters was excited to get there. And, you know, and a lot of it was the BB story. You yeah. know, wanted to hear from the boys. And, you know, that was a miraculous run you made after, you know, facing so much adversity throughout the season. Right, yeah. Um, that's one thing, you know, that helped a lot with Coach Moore, you know. I mean, if you don't know, and people don't know, know a lot about me and Coach Moore, but me, Coach Moore, is, he's one of the closest figures I had in my life. Uh, I spent every single day with him my senior year. I only had two classes my senior year, so my other five classes were co-op periods, and I would go and I spent all day down there, you know, talking football, and after he took the basketball job, talking basketball. So, you know, when we got, we kind of, when we got up there and stuff, it was really special, you know, after the flood, Everybody was just degraded so yeah. greatly. After BB passed, it was like, you know, what the heck are we going to do? You know, we went down there to Tennessee, had a good tournament, lost in the championship to Jonesboro, Georgia. Um, but then after that, it was just kind of like, you know, stunned, you know, like flashbang. It was like, what, what, what the heck? Like, you take a guy like BB King, you know, five regional championships, four in a row. I mean, and he only coached for 12 years. I mean, you so you take a guy like that and you just remove him from a program after you look to him as a leader, it's like what the heck. But you know, Coach Moore come in, you yeah. know, got us straight, got us mentally tough. We started playing some good basketball. We didn't let anything affect us, and we just 
we played through BB, you know, and so um, – we, we got it done eventually. Of, of course, Co- Coach Moore, the son of the great Peggy, Peggy Moore. Yep. So he was around a basketball his entire life and was an assistant coach oh, yeah. as well. Oh, he but, was no stranger. Yeah, but what I think he brought to the table uh, and just knowing Coach – I don't know Coach Moore great, but he was a great stabilizer for you guys. Mm-hmm, and listen, leaders lead. It doesn't matter in what area, Daryl McCoy, basketball, football, baseball, in business. If you can lead, you can lead. Yep. And it looked like he was able to kind of – just kind of just bring everybody together and kind of listen we're going to get this thing done yeah that was one thing we kind of after he stepped in you know a little bit after christmas uh right there in the new years um one of the hitting points we had was just you know was short having a short memory and playing you know fundamental simplifying things you know and so whenever we got the simplification in our head it was kind of like everything was easy you know whenever we had fun played the game we knew how we can play, everything was super easy. So Coach Moore did a great job of just rallying the troops, and we brought the cavalry to Perry Central. <laughs> well, the 14th yeah, region now uh, shaking up a little different this year oh, yeah. as Breathitt County just uh, with a hazard they knocked off yeah, the OT. All-A. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so they punched their ticket to the All-A uh, state tournament. And, you know, right now, you know, Obviously, guys, we want everybody to make sure you remember Peyton Dixon in your prayers. As yeah. uh, you know, I mean, he broke his tibia, and uh, you know, I mean, you just hate it for a kid that's yeah. having such a dominating season. Oh, great player, double yeah. Double. yeah, yeah. State's great. leading rebound, yeah. great player, and uh, you know, for him and coach, the thing I liked about him, he led the state in rebounds, and you know, last year he was kind of a back to the basket guy. This year, he was their point guard. Yeah, yeah really. He's expanded his game. There, we watched him. Uh, he, he came to Prestonburg first game of the year, and his ability to come out and force yeah. our bigs to come out, he knocked down a couple of trays, yeah. one bounce off the dribble. He did a lot of different things. He had evolved his game. He uh, four or five man. threes from the top of the yeah. key. Man, oh, and man, backbreakers. Really yeah, expanded his game. So that's a big loss for Coach Taylor yeah. and uh, – Ledger County because they was exceeding expectations. Yeah. But right now in the 14th region, the way that uh, the way it's hammering out, I, I think you know to me, I think you got three big dogs. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think agree. You got Hazard, Breath, and Not. Not yeah. the, those are your big dogs. I agree. And then you know Perry is right there on the outside. They're, they're kind of on the fringe. You yeah. Know, yeah. Of being in that group, you know, some games you know they are, some games they're not. Uh, but they got to get that consistency before you can put them in it. But I thought Perry and Letcher before the Dixon loss was there together, and mm-hmm. then I think you had the rest of the group behind them too. Mm-hmm. Is that I agree? Is that the way you see it? Yeah, I think um, you know Breath Bre- that kind of solidified themselves in the number one spot after that overtime victory. You know, it was hard fought, but I mean, I, I don't think that game right there is a tale of anything. You know, you still got it till March. So, either one of those teams can pull ahead. You know, you could see Hazard pull ahead. You could see Breathitt pull way ahead. I mean, you never know. But I agree with you, Daryl McCoy. Um, three, three, I think three teams can win it. I think not can get hot and win it. And But I would do not be surprised if in March you see the Hazard Bulldogs and the Breathitt County Bobcats squaring off in Stanton for the regional championship. I do not be surprised by that at all. Al Holland – I mean, Al Holland's worth 15 points, guys. Let's yeah. be honest. I mean, he's yeah. worth 15 points. That team is in shambles sometimes, and he calls timeout. I mean, he saves them five turnovers a game minimal. I mean, look at the timeout he called last year. Uh, you know, tie game, uh, 60, uh, 50, it was 51-51, yeah. Max Johnson throws the ball out of bounds. Timeout. Same thing. You know, game was tied up 69-69, uh, uh, I think, in the overtime. Seth Cottle throws it away. Isaac Bellamy picks it off. Timeout by Al Holland. You know, that guy just sees ahead so well. So, you take you take that team and the sets they run and stuff and the position he puts their his players in to succeed, he's worth 10 to 15 points. I think Jeff Honeycutt's doing a great job with the Bobcats right now. I feel like he's got a longer, more athletic team than he thinks. At the same time, you know, not as athletic probably as my team. You know, you got me and Christian Collins and, and Austin Sperry, you know, even Luke Bellamy and Andrew Combs, you know, those guys are sneaky athletic. But, you know, you've got guys like Kanan Gross, six six, you know, long and athletic. Braxton Terry, who's a bruiser under the basket. You know, Austin Sperry, I mean, one of the most premier athletes in the state. 
I mean, those guys right there can – Bellamy. And Bellamy, yeah, yeah. Isaac Bellamy, deceivingly athletic. Had a crazy block in the Hall A. His championship pinned it off the backboard. I told him I didn't know he could get up that high. <laughs> and, uh, but, no, Isaac Bellamy, he can jump. Jackson Hamilton, my opinion right now, guys, best wow. defender in the 14th region. He's averaging close to two steals a game right now. I mean, his hands and his arms are just so long. He gets in the passing lanes and just wreaks havoc. So, I'm taking the Bobcats number one. I think the Bobcats, I think it's theirs to lose. But Hazard's a close two. Not County's three. After that, you know, you got Perry and Letcher kind of on the fringe. Wolf County team showing promise. You know, they don't. They only have one senior. But right now, I got. I got to stick with the Bobcats, guys. I got to stay true. Well, the, one thing you hit on. This uh, mm-hmm. basketball fans over in the 14th region. You're mm-hmm. very fortunate this year. You've got three to four coaches, Daryl McCoy, that are doing coach of the year jobs in different capacities. Let's talk about Matthew Taylor yep. overcoming the adversity of loss after loss after loss of key players to injuries. Continues to find a way to win. Matthew Taylor, in one way, you say, wait a minute, that's player that uh, coach of the year. Uh, material. Then you go over to Casey Huff. He's kind of reinvigorated Knott County's program through the development work that he's doing and the energy that he brings. And then, of course, oh, yeah, Al Holland uh, just getting it done year after year after year, one of the very best that, uh, that, get, uh, that uh, does it. And then Bryce Hoskins, Coach Honeycutt. Honey, cut those nets down. That's the That's T-shirts right. that are coming now. Al, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought he was a heck of a coach prior. This guy right here is getting it done in a big-time way. This Breathitt County team is playing as a team. I think they're – and listen, not take nothing away from last year because, like you said, there were some athletes, there was some size, there were some guys. But just as a unit playing together, I don't know if there's a a team playing as a unit in the 14th, 15th, or 16th better than Breathitt County. And a lot of it has to do with Coach Honeycutt. Of course, a lot of it – I give a lot of credit to uh, Austin Sperry, too, for being the leader that he is this year. But, man, oh, man, Coach Honeycutt, the job he's doing, Daryl, unbelievable. Yeah, Yeah, when you take a look, I mean, obviously, Hazard's led by – The coaches, yeah. Uh, Evan Eversall there. He, you know, uh, Eversall, uh, I, I was really surprised because I knew Hazard was good, but until I watched them the other night against Perry Central and seen Eversall, the job that he done, I mean, he shut Kaiser Slump down. Yeah. Like, he made his night miserable, you know, and it all, you know, they fed off his defensive pressure. And for Eversall to be able to take step out, he can guard multiple positions, you know, the, uh, and then, you know, the um, the little guard helped me. Coddle. Yeah, Coddle, yeah. Seth Coddle. Uh, that young man, yeah, big shot after big shot, he stepped up uh, playing, you know, uh, a year ahead of his time. I thought he was a year behind right now. But, no, that, you know, that duo right there, Hazard may be the best complete defensive team in the region that I've seen. You know, just the way they work. They, they, the they're, yeah, they're physical and tough. Yeah. You look at Eversall, though, he's a 50, 40, 80 guy, too. Yeah. I mean, you don't find many of those. He averaging 20 a game, eight rebounds a game, and shooting 51% mm-hmm. from, field, uh, from the field, 41% from three, and 83 yeah. from a free throw line. You, <laughs> that's you don't find. Oh yeah, you, yeah. You don't find many. I mean, that's what you want. 50, yeah. 40, 80 guys. If you can get two, or three of those on your team, then you're going to win ball games yeah. no matter what. And you, you look at Evan Eversol. He does so many things that don't show up in the stat book. I mean, I, I played against the kid. Now watching him, I see it more. He's such a floor general. He's he's emotional and he plays. You know, with great passion. You know, you can see him on the floor always high fiving his teammates. You know, getting in their ear, get telling them what to do. You know, I mean. I mean, I like to play that way, so I love watching other kids, seeing right. seeing them and doing that. So, Evan Eversell is a great player, and I think he's the second-best player in the 14th region. But that's actually a good comparison. He's kind of a more athletic he. Yeah, you kind know, of. Yeah, I mean, if you watch what he does on the defensive end, and, you know, I mean, the same kind of passion, you know, he can take, defend the paint. You know, I, I think, you know, when you talk, you know, player of the year, you know, I mean, I think him, I think Sperry, and, you know, Jaden Huff are the three yeah. player of the year candidates right now yeah. ahead of everybody else. I think you could throw probably throw <laughs> Coddle, Coddle in there, too. I yeah. mean, 35 points versus Breathitt, he's, the, the team scored 70. He scored half of his team's points, yeah. you know. It just – I was at that game. It just seemed like every single time he was going down, it was just big shot. Like you said, big shot after big shot after big shot. Breathitt finally, you know – uh, stopped him on the last possession. My cousin Kanan pulled down the rebound, knocked down two big free throws, make it 73-70. Uh, 
And uh, they could uh, Hazard couldn't convert when they play at the end at the other end, and uh, they uh, Brother County uh, advanced to the championship. Which, I mean, you all can you bring up this topic if you want. What about the All A? You take you look at the bracket. Alza right. County had to be Cordia, Jim Buchanan's JV team, and Leslie County to get. And that's no that's no fault no, to Leslie no, County no, or any, Leslie any County, of those programs at all. Yeah. Oh yeah, but you do look at the top bracket. You know, Breathitt, Wolf. Hazard, you know, three teams, that, yeah. three teams that are, you know, that can, that were primed to maybe win the thing, right. you know. So you take that bottom bracket, and you know, you got those teams, you got the top bracket, and it's like a battle for anything. Who done that planning? It's draw. It's a draw. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Blind draw. It's a blind yeah. draw. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, you know, things that me and you know, like my family, like me and my dad's talked about. You know, do you go to a seed? Do you take the top two teams and put them on different sides of the bracket and blind draw the rest? I mean, That's how do you, how do you, I yeah? For. I mean, how do you how do you solve this problem? You know, because I mean, you take like me, my senior year, Hazard beat us in the all mm -hmm. first round of the all A, and mm -hmm. us and Hazard were one A one B all year. Right. I mean, so you take you take the championship game and put it in the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. I mean, fans don't want to see that stuff. No, they definitely don't want to see it. You know, and, and that's one thing. You know, right now, you know, thank goodness in the 15th region we ain't got that issue because you know you, you got your two powerhouses, which is Pikesville and Martin County, on different sides of the bracket, yeah. and then you got two teams that's on the rise. You know, facing them. So, you know, either way, you're going to get a good championship game, yeah. no matter who. Do they blind draw 15th? I yeah, think so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Blind draw. yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's a blind draw pretty much everywhere. Yeah. How do you all think the the super region is going to go down this year? I, I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan. I, but you know, we've not seen it, so you know, who knows? I, I may end up liking it better. I just don't want to take away from the specialness of a region championship. Right. You know, I, I don't want you know now that everybody you know part of the specialness of the region is winning district and even getting to play yeah. at region in the expo you know that's that's part of the specialness and then you know you win the region tournament i just don't want you know any of that you know took away right. because that's the memory you got in kentucky is winning region or making region yeah you know, now everybody makes it right so, yeah. you know i mean yeah but in their defense there was years that i know when my son was in high school there was probably three of the five years he played, that three of the top six teams in the region were in the 57th district. Oh, that's Plains that. for Martin County and uh, Johnson Central. Uh, that, that's normally every year, but, you know, I, I, I still... I mean, it's not fair for them three to get left out when you got somebody like Jenkins. I mean... Uh, it, 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 it's not, but it's also, you know, I mean, now you got two teams with three in it. Before... You know, like uh, automatically in the 60th district, whoever won the regular season got automatic bids right. in 15 because yeah. there's only three right. teams. That's how it is in 50, uh, the 54th. Is it? Yeah. Well, or not 54th, the 55th. Yeah. 55th. Yeah, so 54th has it in there. You get, you know, we you only know, got three, you know. You get that happening. And then, you know, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just think you know, it's where yeah. you live, you know, and, and I think it makes the district tournament more special too when you've got the great does. teams and, you know, you know – that one of you are going to be sitting well, at home, well, you know, so. That 2-3 game is going to be a battle because the loser, loser's done, winner gets to move on because your top two teams moved on. So that 2-3 game was usually an absolute yeah, dog fight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, I, I honestly fun. don't know where I feel about it yet until I actually go through it and experience yep. it. You know, because I, I mean, be honest with you, you know, I, I know a lot of how it works, but I still – there's a lot of unsurety there, too. Yep. You still know. So. Well, here's my take on it. I think that the Super Region would do the 14th Region a huge favor. So, you take you – take, uh, this, this is my thing on it. Look at the 54th District, Hazard, Perry, Buckhorn, Leslie. Hazard and Perry, you know, take for the last 20 years. Predominantly, them and not, those three teams have been the best teams in the region. You go to the region draw – Al Hall and Shane Hoskins know that they don't have to worry about each other for at least the first two games. So you take a year like my senior year, you got us, Perry, Letcher, you know, Hazard. Us and Hazard get put on the same side of the bracket, championship games in the semifinals. We go on to beat Perry by 16 mm -hmm. in the championship. So I think Super Region eliminates 20-point championship games unless you've just got a team that's an outlier. I think Super Region eliminates – 
uh, luck, pure luck. I feel like that these teams, you know, regular season matters. I mean, how many times have coaches, you know, might just cancel regular season games? They'll go, you cancel a regular season game now on the 15th, hurt your RPI probably, you know. So, I mean, then that's going to hurt your seeding for the, reg- for the you know, region yeah. tournament. Yeah. So, my, my opinion, I mean, just me personally, I like the Super Region. I think that the draw is, you know, it makes it special to win district and stuff, but – Everybody wants to win region, you know. The district championships, like it's like the double quick on the way to Disneyland. You love it, but you still, you still don't. That ain't your main goal, you know. Yeah. You're trying to, you're trying to win the region. Well, I so. know there's been teams throw the district championship games. Yeah. To yeah. avoid, oh, yeah. avoid a first yeah. round yeah. game against right. Top four it, or right. Right. Or That's whatever. what I'm saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. you take like, like our region. You know, Perry has to lose the district championship. We got, we, we win it. You we we risk you know playing Perry or Hazard in the first round. In the first, okay. Yeah, you know so you risk playing those teams and, you're off and to stuff. Lose? Right, that's what I'm saying. Some of the, some of those times you're better off to lose. Take like a district like the 56, Powell County. Powell County wins that district. Nothing against Powell County at all, but just in the region they don't stack up you know as good against other teams sometimes. So like this like this past year, Powell County wins their district. Perry Central loses theirs against Hazard. Perry Central beats Powell County by 40 in the first round. District loser, you know, whops the district winner. So, you know, stuff like that makes me feel like the draw should be obsolete. I feel right. like everything, most things should be seeded. I feel like you earn it in the regular season. And like he said about, you know, his teams back then, you know, top six teams in the region not even making the tournament. So, I mean, I feel like the fans want to see it. Fans want to see high-paced, you know, close championship games. With draws, sometimes you don't get that. Well, the one thing we're going to get out of this, Daryl McCoy, is there's not going to be any more, well, that was a fluke. Had we played our best game, we, we probably would have went to state. Right. Now, you're going to get a next game now, yep. Daryl McCoy. Yep. There ain't going to be yep. no more no more of that. So, uh, listen, if you can play, listen, you're going to get that. If you mm-hmm. somehow get knocked off, you're going to get one more game to prove you can keep marching to yep. the Expo Center. So, that is – the one thing out of it. Yeah, and, 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 and again, you know, that, that I just worry, you know, too, does it make district, you know, not, not as valuable or, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, now that, you know, everybody is going to, you know, get the extra game and continue to make it. Well, will the seating be based off of your district tournament it, it, still, though? Yeah, it yeah. will, but, it, you I know. mean, so it still is going to mean a lot to win whether you're playing, I mean, Gives you a better seed. Playing yeah. right. I mean, you get a better seed, yeah. yeah I and I'm not – Feltz is pretty good this year, but I'm just oh, saying yeah. in past time. Right. I'm, I'm just saying, you know. Well, 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 what I'm wanting to know is uh, uh, how's it going to pan out because Catch SAA still has Jenkins in the 15th region. That's true. Region. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know when that's going to right. change. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a little odd seeing Jenkins still, you know, in there. I don't know. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they played. I think they played in the All A tournament. They knocked knocked Central out of the All A, so not Central didn't compete in the All A in the 14th this year. Because Jenkins came so in and Jenkins knocked them did out. Jenkins played in the 14th in the All A. They yeah. did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. they got beat. They got beat by uh, Leslie County, I think. And yeah. you see Jenkins leaving the 15th uh, region. May uh, Belfry took their spot. So yeah. Belfry got to compete in the All A. Well, they got to. Play and didn't compete. They didn't yeah. show up and compete. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, Belfry took a whopping from Pikeville. And, uh, uh, our and good buddy Scotty Dingus was texting eight updates, and I had to read it twice. I think it was like 49 to 15. Yeah, the second quarter. Like, for Kurt Chagy, you yeah. Know, they got a young team there, but they just didn't show up that night. Yeah. So it's, it was the same yeah. thing with the uh, 14th, you know, Brad that beats Owsley by 49 in the championship. Yeah. So. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to do the middle school first, yeah. and then we'll go to high school uh, girls, then high school boys. Come right back and join us here on the Grind Session. If you want to make your dream home come true, call Solid Rock Development today. Check out some of these interior and exterior jobs they've done over the past few years. Solid Rock Development is making custom dream homes come true at a great price. Family owned, family operated, and faith back. Give us a call today at Solid Rock Development. Start this.
the new year off right by making your health a priority. Kentucky Mountain Health Alliance, Little Flower Clinic, Quantum Healthcare, and East Kentucky Chiropractic can help you do just that. We have a great staff of professionals offering a variety of services like medical, dental, behavioral health, mat program, case management, chiropractic, radiology, and lab testing. Little Flower Clinic offers free transportation for Perry County patients. Call to make an appointment, 487-9505, Quantum Healthcare, 436-0711, and East Kentucky Chiropractic, 487 487- This is Bruce Walters from Bruce Walters Kia. By now you know Kia is a great vehicle and you know they come with a 10 year 100,000 mile warranty. So why should you buy from Bruce Walters Kia? At Bruce Walters Kia, we're going to change your oil for free for life. And what you do with that money you save is up to you. Come check out the 2022 Kia Carnival and the 2021 Kia Sorento. Only at Bruce Walters Kia in Pikeville. Or shop us online at brucewalterskia.com. We are back here at Glenn Martin Hammond's office. We got Coach K, Coach <coughs> Kevin Casey to my right, Bryce Hoskins here to in the middle. I'm Daryl McCoy, Coach May on the board, replacing the Meister tonight. Hey, he's replacing him. And listen, he's he's right up there with the maestro. He's getting there, and uh, just a couple of more months, and he might be at maestro level. We can uh, kind of do the what is it they do over in England? They uh, knight crown you, him, yeah, they the crown him, you. Yeah. So, <laughs> Kevin Keithley, I'm not even a first horn in the maestro. Band, yeah. and I'm just telling I'm, right. I'm way behind the maestro. Now I do want to say before you move on, Daryl McCoy, we've got a, a big time listener or watcher tuning in. You know him, I know him. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know him, you better tune into what he has to say. And that's Mr. Taylor Hicks with Next Up Recruits. I, you talk about a young uh, uh, a gentleman that has the inside track on college basketball and, and college athletes in the state of Kentucky. That's the guy you need to be listening to uh, out of course, outside of D&D. But uh, Next Up Recruits, uh, listen, uh, uh, the big time, big time impact they're making in the world of uh, college hoops. If you get mentioned by Taylor Hicks, you, yeah. you know that there's going to be colleges on there. Yes. I mean, that's Next Up Recruits is uh, next to none when it comes to, you know, just, just he's the one, you know, when you're talking blue chip, you know, the best of the best you want associated with Taylor Hicks. We seen him. You know, there, Jasper Johnson, he was you know, right. giving him the grand tour. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, Taylor, amazing guy. He's done a lot for us here at D&D, too. You know, he was the one that, uh, you know, put our name in the hat. You know, we went up, covered the court, uh, 14 stuff with Oscar. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Taylor was the one that set that up. You know, he's uh, uh, definitely appreciate our friendship with Taylor Hicks yeah. and all he does for us. Yeah. The, uh, so as we're getting started here, we got a lot of comments coming in. Kevin Sharp says schools at the end of the day uh, uh, need to uh, keep uh, making it a bigger event and people will come. Jesse Miller says he has number one breath at Hazard 2, not 3, Perry 4 right now. Uh, I, that's kind of that's, what we said there. Right. And, uh, Said, I really think this breath of team is playing well right now. That overtime win against Hazard uh, in the semis said, You got to see how much uh, they are starting to gel. Then you uh, see uh, Letcher Central at five, is what he said. Uh, Kane Gross is playing well for breath, they say. Uh, yeah, he is. Donnie Justice, Donna Justice says, and Franklin Justice says, Are you guys going to talk girls basketball? Yes, we will. We'll talk to them about the next segment there. Cameron Wart says, I'm not a fan of the Super Region. Uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to him. I'm kind of like you, Cam, but you know, we might like it after we get a year of it. Robert Wallace says, I don't like it because it makes the districts mean nothing. Uh, Daniel Combs says, great job, Bryce, and good points. Jesse Miller says, leave the tournament alone and continue to draw. No matter what you have uh, to win, you have to win them all to win when uh, region starts. And Who you play matters a lot, though, fellas. It does. Terry Sewell says, Bryce has done an awesome job tonight. And Sharon King says, Bryce, you've done a great job. So, as, uh, as you know, and last thing on that right there, you know, I, I'm not saying I'm 100% against it. But, you know, I'm, I, I'm wanting to see what the kinks are in it because, yeah. you know, there's always some kinks with something that you're trying out new. And listen, I mean, let's say what it is. You know, I mean, it, I'm hoping that what this does is bring bigger crowds. 
you know, because that's one thing that we've seen, you know, especially in the first round, we've seen, you know, maybe if the uh, loser of the 60th district, you know, is playing the winner, you know, of the 57th district, you know, the crowd ain't as good. So hopefully this right here will fill the expo up and we'll get bigger crowds. So. Yeah. Well, doesn't the top four teams get by yeah. anyway? Yeah, they're, I yeah. mean, yeah. So, the, so if you win your district, you yeah, get it, by. It, right. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a lot to play for there. Yeah. There's not a chance of you coming in there laying an egg against because you think you're going to roll over somebody. I mean, I'm torn on it, but I think I, I, think I like it better because I, I just know – some I'd, teams that's been left out of the region that would have been well, that would have had a chance to win the region had they got there. And, and I would say that ninety percent of the people from the fifty seventh, like you're from, uh, would say that because the fifty seventh is usually your most dominant district with uh, McGoffin, Painesville, John Central, and Martin. I was just gonna uh, mention before we got off the topic. Uh, I heard through the grapevine through a really close source, Daryl, we talked about it uh, briefly when it went down. When the vote and the meeting happened, here there was a strong contingent from Pike County that was opposed to the super region. Yeah. And there was another group, Floyd County and, and over in Johnson, McGoffin area, that was for the super region. Well, well you have two, three team districts right. in Pike County. Right. So, so they were yeah. pushing against it. They said they don't want it. We don't want the super region. I don't blame them because right. it's going to keep, you know, it, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's going to make it harder on yeah, harder. two districts, which mm-hmm. is three team districts. Right. Well, well so. Pike on Shelby Valley essentially has had a buy yeah. into right. the region for That's the last right. 10 years. So they, you know, they yeah. don't, I mean, right. yeah. our, yeah. our breath of districts the same way, you know, the win over Wolf County punched breath into the district, into the regional tournament. They were free by to the district championship. Yeah. So, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's so like you win that you win that second game and you're you're out there, you're in the district you're in the regional tournament. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so I mean hopefully, you know, that fixes some of that. We'll but, see. Yeah. It's a wait and see it's a wait and see thing. That's it. Let's go to middle school rankings, coach, yeah. and uh, you know we get a lot of buzz from this. We do. Let's see where we got it right and where we went wrong here. All right, guys, here. Middle school, D&D, Mountaintop 10. At number 10, you got Johnson Central. Number 9, Pikeville. 8, Hazard. 7, Chapmanville. 6, May Valley. 5th is Mullins. 4th is Logan. 3rd is Betsy Lane. 2 is Shelby Valley. And coming in 1 is East Perry. So Others receiving votes are Car Creek and Whitesburg. Mm, no Asla County. No, no Asla County. Yeah. Well, uh, what I think you know happened is I think with Asla County and them, they played their county tournament earlier, and I think a lot of people ain't thinking of Asley. The district. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, because where their county tournament's already over. Right, and, yeah. You know, so it, it makes it a little rough there, but, you know, I, I can tell you one thing where we went wrong and fans are going to be upset, Coach, is that number two, Shelby Valley. Yeah. Don't call them Shelby Valley. No. It's Valley. Don't ever <laughs> call uh, Valley Shelby Valley. Hey, listen, we've heard it for five years now. Uh, a little surprised by that, right? Yeah. Because Mullins knocked off that, uh, Valley yeah. in a big time affair, two of the top teams in Pike County, and Mullins got that win. And, and I know some of the Mullins fans are saying, wait a minute, oh, what's going on there? And uh, I could be wrong, but I think Shelby Valley beat them twice. So, okay. Uh, you know, I, Valley. Yeah, Valley. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and I and I'm and I think another team probably getting left out because it's over in that 14th region. What about over at Powell County? We're, we're, yeah, uh, what's yeah. going on there? They got they got a heck of a team, and they've knocked off some top ten opponents throughout the year. Well, I, I think Powell County and Owsley uh, are the two that got shunned yeah. on it. You know, and you know, I think a lot of it is people just you know where they you know they play their county tournaments early. You know, and you know, I think it, you know, it, it <clears throat> causes a lot of people to uh, forget about them. But when you take, I think they, I think East Perry, I've seen them all play. I think East Perry, I think they got it right there. East Perry is the best team. Uh, Valley, uh, Valley and Betsy Lane, I kind of see on the same level. I think on any given night, flip or coin, mm-hmm. either one of them can win. Right. You know, Valley, I'm surprised that they're able to do it. Uh, with the way they do, they kind of play small ball, and uh, you know they don't necessarily have back to the back uh, basket bigs, uh, which they do have the Justice kid that come over from Pikesville, you know. Uh, yeah. Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 
But the uh, and Betsy Lane, I mean, listen, Robbie Joe Johnson, he's built dynasties everywhere he went. No surprise that he's got that there at Betsy Lane, and you can tell the developing that he's doing because his players, most of his roster, already playing on the JV at Betsy Lane. So. Yeah, right. And then Logan, I got to watch them. Uh, this past Seth Hainer doing a great job with them. Uh, Bentley Winston coming away uh, with the player of the game. That kid is a dog. You know, I mean, he he's my kind of guy. Gets it done on the defensive side and the offensive side. Um, you had uh, – and then you go down to Mullins. Uh, you know, they've been kind of the surprise to me. I didn't expect Mullins to be that good. If I – May Valley is the one I think a lot of people would say put them in front of Mullins, but I don't know. I mean, I, I, I was going to say, Daryl, when you talk about Mullins, what makes them so good is they've been together so long, and they've been playing literally since the Little League together. You're talking about third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh, and they played with one of the best junior high I teams. Love the yeah, that's what I was going to go at. You got Colton Ratliff, who's mm-hmm. a, you talk about. A pit bull that don't back down from nobody. Yeah, Colton Ratliff's that guy. Then you talk about Jonah Hicks, uh, versatility. Uh, he's, he has slimmed his body, gotten stronger over the last year and a half, can do a lot of different things. You're talking about Brody Fields. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm missing uh, oh, uh, Grant Hall's younger brother, oh, uh, Nolan. Nolan Hall. Yeah. So those young that, – that team right there may the, be the most – a lot like the Breathitt County High School team, uh, playing together, w- uh, watching the older guys be successful, competing against really good players growing up. That Smolens team's really good because they play well together and they know each other so well. Yeah, I'd like to see. Uh, I don't know if May Valley and Mullins have played, but that's probably the one. I would probably have May Valley ahead of Mullins. Uh, then uh, Chapmanville. You know, honestly, I think Chapmanville. You know, belongs up there in the top five. But when they lost to Logan, you know, that's part of. Right. You know, you drop. You know, drop down a spot. You know, they responded well off that loss, though. I think Dakota Dalton come back next game and drop 29. Dakota Dalton might be uh, in running for player of the year. Yeah, I, I mean, when you go player of the year, I mean, you're sitting there. You, Terry you go, or Owsley. Yeah, you got Terry from Owsley. You got Dakota Dalton. Uh, you got um, uh, from Betsy Lane yeah. uh, uh, to Andrew Collins. Yeah. Uh, then uh, East uh, – Perry, the ball head Prater. Prater. Yeah, Prater. 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 And the kid uh, from Powell. I uh, can't think of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, Morgan. Morgan. There you go. The uh, And uh, then, you know, I think Colton uh, Ratliff. Yeah. And then the Buck kid, Young Buck. Yeah. Uh, Wes Buck. You know, those are three of the – or four of the – four <laughs> or five of the favorites. Then, uh, you know, they're at Logan. They're pretty evened out. You got Lucas Lambert, Bentley Wimps, and Grayson Sanders. I mean, that team is stacked. It's hard to just pick one. I, I think they're yeah, afraid that they'll pull votes from each other. I got to do the Logan Chapmanville game, and I was shocked. I, I was I was really shocked because I really thought Chapmanville would win that ball game. But Logan is so balanced. And, man, yeah. they absolutely get after you like no other middle school team I've seen. It's a end-to-end, 84 feet, right up. I mean, and as you said, Bentley Williamson is yeah. different. He's different. I, I love him, man. He's a leader. He's a floor general. If and the ball hits the floor, he's, he's the first on. one to hit the floor on it. Yeah. I mean, he guards the other team's best player. He just, he's got something different about him. Man, David Early's little brother, Zoe, he got oh, his own too. Yeah, yeah, Zoe Orkin. But uh, then uh, Hazard, they got that Combs kid. That's really nice. Dalton, is that his name Dalton Combs? I think I think that's his name. Uh, oh, does he play on the middle school team? I know he starts varsity. Does he start varsity? Dalton Combs. I'm pretty sure it, it, it might not. That might not be his, his last name. Is I thought Combs. that boy. I thought that boy was a freshman. Anyway. Yeah, it, it yeah. could have been. It, but there was a Combs kid on that team. That Maybe really I haven't good. really paid much attention to the middle school this year. Uh, and then you know Johnson Central. We know the kid looks like Ben Wallace. What's his name? Ben Wallace. Uh, <laughs> what is his name? Um, uh, you play like Ben Wallace? Yeah, yeah. I play <laughs> exactly like him. Not yeah. priest, right? Malice in the priest. palace. Priest. No, uh, His name is, man, uh, he, he me you right talk now. about motor, you talk about high octane. Right there on the tip man, of the tongue too. Um, that young man does not stop competing. 
unbelievable. You love to see that. Yeah, I, I, and you know, obviously, there's there's some kids that ain't playing middle school like Bryson Dawes that would yeah. be in the conversation. Right. But well, and then even at Johnson Central, you got Mason McKenzie and Cooper Blair both. There. Yeah, They're yeah, both of them. Kids. I mean, that would be unreal at the middle school level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I watched McKenzie hit ten threes in a JV game at East Ridge. Yeah. Like, there, uh, uh, Somebody on here said Brennan Daniels. Yeah, Brennan, 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 Brennan yeah. Daniels. That's yeah. what it is. And yeah. then, uh, and then uh, you got uh, the craft kid from Car Creek. Yeah, yeah. and, 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 White, White and Dials. Yeah, Dials. Yeah. Dials. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. So, uh, it, you know, but you know, I mean, it, it spread out, and you know, uh, there was, you know, but to say that, you know, Coda Dalton definitely one of the favorites. Yeah. In that. In that right. Player of the year race. I agree. I, I just want to mention. I don't want to forget about these Pikeville Panthers with Gillespie and Caden Newsom, uh, two really good players. And and Pikeville, they've got some uh, good wins this year. So uh, keep an eye out for Pikeville as this county tournament uh, inches closer, uh, which is scheduled to take place. I believe the first week. Of February, yeah, and guys, let me know the Combs kid's name for Hazard. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure he's a Combs kid, blonde headed kid. But uh, you know, and he's one of the best players I've seen. Reminds me a lot of said Luke Combs. Yeah. yeah, Luke Combs. Yeah. Combs yeah. was just and, uh, So you know, he's uh, he's that's his name, Luke uh, Luke Combs. <laughs> yeah, Luke uh, Combs. That very uh, very talented kid. We got to cover him over it. West Perry, you know, and then I uh, call Maggard son's not, yeah. not bad. No, you know, he's I mean, not. He, yeah. He's not. I got to do a night of that tournament at uh, West Perry. Yeah. And, you know, I got to see the kid from Owsley County. But the thing about East Perry that's so special is East Perry is they're just so physical. I mean, they're from top to bottom, every position, they are physical. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, why I think a lot of coaches had them. I, I think 90% of them. Uh, voted East Perry as number one seed, so you know, yeah, definitely big ops there. But talking about that kid from Owsley County, I know you know him quite well. You played with him, you know. Uh, oh yeah, when he was a tiny little kid, whenever I played with him. Yeah, yeah how was, special can he be? Oh, I think Andrew Terry. He's got all the potential in the world. I mean, he's six five, six six, shooting threes, dunking it in middle school. I mean, I feel like if he can keep expanding his game, maybe put some muscle on in the weight room. You know, get a little more explosive, get a little stronger. You know, where he can muscle his way. I feel like that kid can go really far, you know, uh, yeah, just just his ability, just his God-given and, ability. And the thing uh, that pe- most people don't realize, probably what helps him a ton, a ton on the junior high level this year, Bryce, is last year he actually played – he played up. Yeah. He played high school last year. Yeah. So he got he to pl- play against those – He played as a seventh grader too. Yeah, seventh yeah. and eighth gra- – uh, seventh and eighth grade girl. You may not know this. So uh, seventh and eighth grade he played – High school varsity, yeah, yeah, and so he reclassed yeah, this year, yeah. So yeah. he was ineligible, yeah. So he is used to that physicality, used right. to that speed, and he's just now he's just at a different level. I, I wish he would have saved that high school year for this, yeah. this year. Yeah, <laughs> we, we played them in the Peggy Moore Classic my junior year at, at uh, Breathitt, and it was his older brother Xander was a, he was a fifth year senior. Uh, Andrew Combs, uh, Andrew Terry played. I said Andrew Combs for a minute. Mm-hmm. I hope he's watching. That uh, we got John Mead says uh, anyone in the top ten uh, said on any given night could uh, upset the other one said rankings just give locker room material to teams and I think it's great for the game said great to see middle school athletes get some of the spotlight appreciate all you guys do and yeah. uh, and that's you know that's what it's about you know middle school athletes coach we started covering it yeah. three four years ago. Yeah. And now every media outlet around is, and it's become a booming uh, business. There are everybody, you're seeing two or three more media outlets doing middle school rankings. Yep. Listen, we were the first to be like, look, our focal point this year is going to be middle school hoops. We're going to get out and cover. Because even before that, Daryl, we did individual rankings on players. But now it went so far as we were getting out to at least – three, four games a week, middle school, and you saw what happened with that Dorton Belfry Championship game. Uh, so, yeah, it's a booming business, and uh, you see other media outlets taking yeah. advantage of it. There's which, some media outlets that's here just to cover middle school yeah, now. that's right. So, yeah. Well, I mean, it gives you a peek yeah. into the future yeah. when, you, no. when you're showing these young kids that you do a little – it gives right. you a window into yeah. the future of what you're getting ready to see in the region. Well, right. and it's more important now, you know, Coach Casey, you know, uh, he could probably speak on it more than anybody, you know. I mean, you know, uh, in past, you know, this year here, 
you know, you'd just be getting started on Braxton Keithley. Right. You know, he, he was a household name before he even hit the he high school. You know, the and, uh, so so that's the that's the big thing there. And uh, we got Brendan Jackson says, who's the best guard in the 15th region? Uh, well, we'll answer the middle school now and we'll answer high school later. Best guard in the 15th region. Whew, man. Middle school. Uh, middle yeah. school and you just talk just pure guard. Um do you consider Bryson Dawes at, in it? If if you consider Bryson Dawes, Bryson Dawes is my guy. Yeah, yeah, that that would be me. If you consider Bryson Dawes, I take Bryson Dawes. Uh, and if not, as far as guards go, you would have to. It would be tough, but I'm not seeing. I mean, listen, you got uh, you got my guy Mark Bowling over there, special player at Valley. Uh, but you know, just all around package, Colton Rattler's hard to beat. Man, he's a dog. Yeah, he's a stud, yeah. man. Yep. And uh, so uh, that'll be it for that segment. When we come back, we're going to talk girls basketball. We'll see how much Bryce knows about girls basketball. I know, games. I know a little bit. There we go. We'll be right back. This is Bruce Walters from Bruce Walters Kia. By now, you know Kia is a great vehicle, and you know they come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. So why should you buy from Bruce Walters Kia? At Bruce Walters Kia, we're going to change your oil for free for life. And what you do with that money you save is up to you. Come check out the 2022 Kia Carnival and the 2021 Kia Sorento. Only at Bruce Walters Kia in Pikeville. Or shop us online at brucewalterskia.com. Unfortunately, water, mold, or fire damage can happen to you. Restoration One of Southern West Virginia is available 24-7 to help take the stress out of your mess. Our primary goal is to respond and restore your property back to normal as quickly and safely as possible. When disaster strikes, Restoration One is your go-to cleanup crew. Save our number now in case you need us later. Whether the job is big or small, give Restoration One a call. 304-443-4959. For all your custom ATV and UTV needs, call GFAB at 606-639-2029 or visit us on Facebook. We specialize in custom cages, rock slides, and bumpers. Call today. Let's go riding. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. We are back here at Glenn Martin Hammond's office in Cold Run. If you're looking for a lawyer that will get you the judgment you're looking for and the outcome you deserve, call Glenn Martin Hammond. Guys, Coach Kevin Keasley, we got Bryce Hoskins, I'm Daryl McCoy, and Coach May on the board uh, replacing the maestro tonight. He will be back next week. So, um, definitely missing our big toe. Yeah. So, uh, as uh, we see, Lynn Keithley says, not finding another middle school guard as tough as Coton Ratliff. Uh, we see Amanda Hicks agrees with that. Logan Bartram says, Dalton Combs is, uh, is a stud uh, at Hazard on the high school level. And I uh, think uh, that's, as we go into the girls' top ten here, Coach, I'm interested in seeing how the girls fall yeah. because – you know, it's, uh, you've seen some teams beat up on each other these last couple of weeks, and uh, it's been two weeks since we've had the rankings come out. Coach May, what's it look like? Uh, you got number 10 coming in as Mingo Central, number 9, Perry Central, 8, Fleming County, 7, at Spring Valley, 6, Johnson Central, 5, is Ashland, 4, is Russell, 3, Boyd County, Two Pikeville, one Wayne. Then you had others receiving votes: Chapmanville, Martin County, Letcher Central, Shelby Valley, Pike Central, and Logan. So, right. top ten there, and I, I'm shocked at that already because Pikeville's not one. But I've not got to see Wayne play. Well, the uh, I, I tell you what, that don't shock me because this Wayne team, uh, coach, they've been number one all year, and. Uh, 
that Wayne squad may be the best girls team I've seen since Huntington St. Joe with Dina Gerald and Paige Shining. I mean, they're that good. Uh, my daughter had the pleasure of getting to play that Huntington St. Joe in the first round of the West Virginia yeah. State Tournament. Uh, it wasn't good. <laughs> no, it no. was not pretty. No, we lost no. by about 40, I think. They were under your And Dina Gerald probably at the time, not to get off the subject, but in my opinion, still the best girls player I've ever seen play in this coverage area. She was just at a different level. Dina Gerald was yeah. different. I agree. I agree 100%. But when you sit here and look, you know, uh, does anything surprise well, you on the list? I, I'm going to go back, and I know you're a fan now, uh, and I know you're probably a fan, uh, Coach May. Johnson Central, the job that uh, Coach uh, Hicks is doing. They dropped the spot. They dropped the spot, and they, they haven't lost to a – Kentucky team yet. They lost to GW out of West Virginia. Out of West, Washington, that's their out of West, only, only loss. loss. Yeah. And they have just been running teams from start to finish. Defense, 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 pressure, 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 and they can run them in and out, Daryl McCoy. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I honestly, like, I've become a huge fan after watching Lamar and Gatlinburg. Yeah. You know, I, I think the McKenzie girl, uh, you know, it, she's one of them players that can go get them a bucket when they want. You know, Carly Stanley. Uh, you know, I mean, she's a rising superstar. Uh, but, you know, and, and really, Becca Wright, you know, that team goes as – she goes at the point guard position. You know, she's been kind of the leader and the catalyst for, you know, them getting started. Taylor McKenzie, I mean, it's just a great group of girls. But, you know, I, Wayne and Pikeville, I think, are your one-two, no matter how you want to put it, they're one-two. Uh, Boyd County, uh, Jumpin' Russell – well, I think a lot of that has to do with Boyd County winning the 2A state title. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so they jump Russell, although I don't know if they're better than Russell or not because Shaylin still, you know, she might be Miss Basketball, mm-hmm. you know, this year. She's that special of a player for uh, Russell. So I, I don't know. Audrey Biggs also won the finalist. You know, it's going to be interesting to see because no matter what, I could see the uh, Miss Basketball coming out of 16th region, yeah. Biggs or Shalen Steele. Yeah. And uh, then, uh, you know, Johnson Central, you know, I, I still think, you know, coming up, they got uh, a pretty tough schedule ahead of them. So, you know, I, I think, you know, once they get a couple key wins, you know, that's the big thing. They beat, they beat, they've won every game they're supposed to win, plus the ones they wasn't supposed to win. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be interesting to see if anybody can, you know, hold them down, I think, and then they'll jump back in. You know, Ashland, it surprised me. Ashland jumped them. Uh, but, you know, people, a lot of people don't realize how good George Washington is right. either. Yeah. You know, I mean, one of the top teams year in, year out. Well, I watched that game. game on the D&D Sports Network, and GW is pretty good. But I'm like you, Coach Hicks has done a fabulous job. And he, like, he just keeps running people in. Yeah. But I, I think down the, down the road, they're going to have to shorten the rotation a little bit. Right. I yeah. agree with that. I yeah. mean, they go anywhere in the tournament. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, he plays 12. Yeah. He, yeah. He's yeah. going to have to shorten it. I, I think, like Daryl said, you got Baker, uh, Taylor McKenzie, and the Stanley girl. And yeah. then you got Kayla McKenzie, who is a knockdown shooter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then after that, you got, I mean, I, maybe he's just trying to figure it out, but. We'll see, right? Yeah. 12, 12 or 13 and 1, right? Yeah. Uh, like well, you got a great staff there. I mean, he, him adding Cameron Works has really oh, yeah. helped him. Yeah. Too, you know? I mean, I think Cameron and the girls respect him and, you know, uh, yeah. really play hard with him being on the bench. And then, you know, that Spring Valley team, I'm telling you, they're ranked, I think, two in their uh, class in West Virginia. That's, that's the team that could be – in that top five too, you know. I mean, Neil, Ashland, Johnson Central. You could go either way on any given day with either three of them. And then you know, you look down Perry Central, Fleming County, jumping up a spot. Mingo Central dropping down to ten. You know, I, and then others receiving votes. You know, here Shelby Valley. You know, Shelby Valley with Zoe Johnson, Sadie Johnson. They've been my surprise of the year so far, besides counting off Johnson Central. 
Shelby Valley's 11 and 3. 11 and 3. I didn't expect it. Uh, watched them throughout the summer. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Prestonsburg beat up. Preston beat up on them multiple times. Yeah. And that's not taking nothing away. I'm saying no, because Prestonsburg's uh, uh, much better than what people anticipated. But Shelby Valley of old, I didn't think we were going to see that. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, 11 and 3. And they're playing pretty well, right? Uh, uh, you know, obviously, when they play Pikeville in that All-A championship, yeah. Yeah, it didn't go their way. But – Outside of that, they're, they're as competitive as anyone. Yeah, it wasn't just Prestonsburg. I mean, there was a couple teams this summer that, you know, are in that middle of the pack with Prestonsburg that beat up on them. And so I was very surprised. But, you know, you also got a healthy Zoe Johnson there. Zoe Johnson putting up huge numbers this year as uh, I, I'm pretty sure we got her numbers here. Zoe, you know, she, she's the type of girl right now I think uh, – Averaging close to a double double, if not a double double. I think she's averaging. 13. She is averaging 13 and 10, and as what's impressive, she's shooting 54 percent from the field, 77 percent from the free throw line. So, I mean, that's that's yeah. big numbers. Uh, I gotta watch her play, and Sadie is that one, right? And they were both unreal. Yeah. Uh, Sadie Johnson can be really, really special. The uh, as. The, uh, as uh, as we are uh, sitting here, you see Letcher Central and Perry Central out of the 14th, Bryce. Yep. Any of the 14th region teams besides them two uh, deserve to be here right now? I'll tell you right now, I think I fully believe that Asla County's girls do deserve to be up there. I mean, great team. Just beat Hazard by uh, 42 in the All-8 uh, Regional Championship. Yeah. Beat a top 25 state-ranked girls team in Corbin by 14. Yeah, I mean they, they've they've had uh, they're a little young, you know, lost a few of their key players. Now Andrew Terry's sister, Addison Terry, great player. Point guard Carly Smith, Leia Lynch, sister of Lexi Lynch, who's a great player uh, for Asla County. I mean those girls right there, they can light it up. I think they shot like seventy percent from three in the first half against Hazard. I mean now those girls right there can play. Travis Smith, actually one of my grade school basketball coach, now coaches Asley's high school girls. Great coach. I mean, he can. He knows how to get it out of those girls. They respect him. His daughter Carly is the point guard on that team. Uh, I really, do, I do, do believe that um, they have a shot and they're definitely cracking the top ten by the time it's over and have a shot at going to Rupp uh, this year. I, yeah, I, I agree with you, Bryce. I, listen, I didn't know. You know, I wasn't a uh, guru of 14th region girls hoops, uh, but I, I'm with you. Well, maybe you're not, but I'm definitely surprised with how Owsley County's performed this year. Yeah. Me personally, I they they've kind of came out of nowhere, for, at least from from my perspective. Yeah, I love Addison Terry. Yeah. You know, she's yeah, great uh, player. Yeah, good. I mean, yeah. she's outstanding. And and then you know, I mean, I, I think the team that's knocking on the door there that wasn't mentioned is I think Leslie County would be. Yeah, one I like right Leslie there out. You know, and you know, listen, uh, Megan Huff has done a fabulous job there at North Central. Yeah. that would be. My surprise, not Central was in others receiving votes last week, fell out this week. But you know, they uh, that not Central team, uh, you know, when you when you play not Central, you better get ready to run, you know, because yeah. that gay heart girl, she oh, yeah, get up and down she's the great, huh? 1500 points in yeah. her career. She handles the ball really well, also, yeah. And they went up and uh, beat a red hot uh, Betsy Lane yeah. team the other night. So the uh, a little fireworks yeah. there, but the, yeah, I saw uh, a little scuffle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, but said so Alzi girls have uh, been top three for the uh, past three yep. to four years. They Very have. good squad. Yep. Logan Bartram says uh, Jesse Miller says the breath that Lady Cats are playing good ball right now. Yeah, they are. Keep them on your radar. They're super young and will be yep. top ten soon. Uh, Cameron Wart says their strength their strength in numbers playing this many. Uh, players uh, plays into our system and what we like to do said so three of the top ten playing for us right now didn't get any minutes last year at JC said so we're deep disciplined and developing it's hard to keep them off the floor I agree with one you're exactly right Cameron they are very disciplined and they compete yeah I, I mean and, and you know Letcher you know when, when you talk at 14th region, I mean, they got one of the favorites there for player of the year in Kiara Couch. Oh, yeah, she's a great player. She's outstanding. And, uh, you know, so 
I, I could really see Ledger. I think you know they've dropped a couple in recent uh, time in recent weeks, but you know I think Ledger is one of them. At the end of the day, is going to be one of the favorites to win that 14th. Mm -hmm. And I also uh, you know I think Owsley, Breath, uh, Leslie, and Perry, and Not are probably your five. And then do not sleep on any given night. I'm not saying they can win three in a row, but that Hazard team. Uh, <coughs> uh, Coach Todd, uh, you know he he Todd Howard. He's done a fabulous job with a young group. Yeah. Coach. He has Todd Howard a lot like Coach Hicks in the sense that he develops uh, starting young, junior high, high school, and gets the most out of each player. Yeah, uh, Hazard, you know, took a tough one on the chin, and all they all the original championship, like I said, as it beats them by I think forty two or three. Something like that, but uh, that team they they're kind of young a little bit. I think they got a uh, you know they got the Heidi Bentley girl and they they got the the left-handed guard. I can't remember her name. She she shoots the mid-range shot really well. You know that team does look promising. Uh, my opinion right now, 14-3 Jen girls. Um, Perry Central's pulled out in front of everybody. You know they yeah. beat they beat Asley by seven. They beat uh, not Central. I can't remember by how many. I think it was double digits. Dang, dang near. Um, beat you know they beat the top. Two, they beat. They're, Perry Central's number one. They beat two and three already. Yeah. You know, Letcher Central. You know, I don't know if they played Letcher Central or not yet. Um, I haven't really kept up with that. But I know that they beat Owsley and not. So, the top three teams, in my opinion, you know, you got one, Perry. You know, you can stick Owsley or not at two. I don't think they've played yet. But they're both about equal. You know, they lost a little bit from last year, bring back some of their stud players. But uh, Perry Central, the, their girls have pulled uh, pulled away over there. You know, they got the Emily Neese girl, shoots the ball great. Kyron McLarnis, you know, they got all the, those girls right there that run the floor well, play great defense, and they shoot, they shoot the ball. The Perry Central girls shoot the ball, one of the better girls teams I've ever seen shoot the ball. And, and we watched them face yeah. Johnson Central and uh, Gatlinburg. And that, initially, first half, uh, Perry Central played really, really well, but Johnson Central's – uh, heat, yeah. bringing it, got, got to them in that second half. Yeah, I, you know, and I think they're very well coached with Misty. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. She, she does a great job. But, you know, I, I think, you know, Perry Central's one. And then, to me, I think that Letcher and Knott are your next two. Now, the last four years, as uh, Logan Bartram says, Letcher and Knott has played in that 14th region title game. Well, Asley, Asley played in it. Uh, Asley and Letcher. 2022. Was it 2022? Kiara right. Couch hit the game winning floater with, about, with no time on the clock. I was at that game. So you take and look. Well, he said three out of four years. Right, so yeah, it was. Yeah, they had yeah. been. They so, had been, yeah. Uh, 53rd district strong there uh, in that region. But, you know, I I think that them are the three, in my opinion. And then I think Owsley and Leslie are right there, uh, you know, has a chance to knock anybody off on yeah. any given day. I, th I think I think the Asa County probably has a little more firepower than the Letcher County girls. You know, uh, they got the Ma I forgot to mention her, the Macy Brown girl inside. Yeah, outstanding. I mean, just catches it and shoots over top of anybody. I mean, she's pushing six foot. I would almost guarantee it. Mm -hmm. Probably maybe a little over. I mean, she's just a monster down low. Pulls down rebounds over top of everybody's head. You know, I don't know if there's a big girl in the 14th region that matches up. I mean, she ate the Coddle girl from Hazard up, and the Coddle girl from Hazard been playing really well. Mm -hmm. You know, but Macy Brown, she's just a force to be reckoned with down there. Uh, transfer from Buckhorn, she, but she's a great player. So, uh, if Alza County can get their threes rolling, you know, Leah, Carly, and Addison can hit the threes. Macy can pull down the rebounds and score under the goal. Alza County and Lady Owls are going to be a force to reckon with come March. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to jump out, take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have the boys' top ten. Come right back and join us here on the grind session. Come see us at Trailhead Bar and Grill in Huntington, West Virginia. For the locals, come to hang out and the trail riders come to visit. Follow us on Facebook page for our daily specials. We're open seven days a week here at Trailhead Bar and Grill. You can give them a call at 681-308-6088. Make sure you follow them on their Facebook page to keep up with all their daily specials and for business and operation hours. Trailhead Bar and Grill, located downtown Mate 1, West Virginia. Here at Logan Bank & Trust, we are committed to serving the needs of the Southern Coalfields. So if you need to borrow money, remember, we are just a click away. Here at LB&T, we make online banking easy. 
We've taken the hassle out of applying for a loan on our new website. It's as simple as going to our lbnt.com website and choosing the loan product that best suits your needs. Your loan on your time. Visit us at lbnt.com. You're only a click away. So if you need to borrow money, remember, we are just a click away. It's easy to apply online at lbnt.com. And all decisions are made locally. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. If you got a big job to get done, don't just trust any flagging service. Call Diamond Flagging Service. Diamond Flagging Service keeps your community safe while also making sure it stays moving. Give Diamond Flagging Service a call today for their services. They also offer amazing job opportunities. Diamond Flagging Services, proud supporter of the Mountain Athletes. Surprise a lot of people this year. We are back here as uh, we are here at Glenn Martin Hammond's office. We got Coach Kevin Keithley, Bryce Hoskins. I'm Daryl McCoy and Coach May on the board. It's full house tonight, Coach. It's a full house. And listen, as you saw as we come on air, we're still talking hoops. We're still talking life and commercial breaks. And before we go to the boys, I'm, I was wanting to make sure I got this in on the girls segment. Um, congratulations to Brandon Kidd, Daryl McCoy. Coach Brandon Kidd of Prestonsburg. I've got a chance to go watch Phelps. By the way, Justin McCoy is doing a nice job over there with his team. Got a chance to watch him play Prestonsburg at the Fieldhouse. Well, Prestonsburg came out with a big W right before that snowstorm, and it was Coach uh, Brandon Kidd's I don't know, 98th win of his career, which now moves him into second place all time, passing by a guy that you and I know very well, uh, Harold Tackett. Daryl McCoy uh, surpassed Harold Tackett and now moves into second place all time as the Prestonburg girl coach, only behind Bridget Clay at 120 wins. Yeah, he says, get on down there, Coach Tackett. Down yeah. three where you belong. He said, uh, yeah, Brandon Kidd's here taking over two now. The, uh, no, the uh, uh, Harold Tackett coaches the assistant on yeah. the boys' team. So, uh, as uh, – as we are, uh, Lee and Keithley says, congrats, Coach Kidd. And uh, this is, we still got two segments left, but this one here, I'm sure we're going to get some arguments on. <laughs> Let's see what we got here, Coach May. Top 10. On your d and Mountain Top 10 boys' side. Coming in at number 10 is the Hawks, Pike Central. Tug Valley, Lawrence County, Morgan County, Pikeville, Knott Central, Brantford County, Ashland at number three, the Bulldogs of Hazard at number two, Boyd County at one. Uh, other teams receiving votes were McGoffin County, Martin County, Fleming County, Chapmanville, Round County, Prestonsburg, and Logan. So that's your boys' hmm. top ten. And let, now, it, let it go, boys. Now remember, this here was voted on on the weekend. So yeah, you know, that's the right. so like a Hazard brother probably hadn't played yet. Yeah, time, yeah, yeah. So the uh, that's the interesting thing to remember. But as you uh, as you sit here and look, where did we wrong? That listen, Daryl McCoy. I said it two weeks ago, and uh, listen, I love Hazard. We talked about. it. I said you put Breath to the side. I think Hazard's that number two team. I still believe before that win that Breath was ahead of Hazard. And I still believe so, even negating that game being played. And uh, I do uh, believe that Boyd should now be ahead of Ashland, right? Uh, Boyd knocked off Ashland. Yeah, head-to-head. Uh, yeah, head-to-head, so they should be ahead. Uh-huh. I wouldn't have said that before because I, well, I'm going to get yeah. in trouble. Cause <laughs> I love Boyd County, and I love the players at Boyd County. Uh, but I do like seeing Pike Central back in that top ten. They're getting things going and rolling. But I still I still would have breath it a little higher on that list. Well, the, uh, you know, as far as you know that right there goes when when you sit there and look not I, you know I, I can't lie whenever this was before the game I still had a hazard ahead of breath it you know and you know the thing to remember about breath its losses is most of them come without Austin Sperry in the lineup yeah. or half of them did you know they've lost what four games yeah only, I only one of them came without yeah Austin oh okay so McLean the, County yeah the uh, and, and then you know that they come in, played really well without him in the pressing. They competed, tournament. but when you take, you know, 
I don't know. Coach May might pull it up there. I don't know head to head. You know who Hazard's there. I know Hazard's played a really tough schedule, and you know that's why you know I had on my head of breath at the time. But you know I, I do think they're one A one B. You know I after we watch breath it in Hazard at DJ Begley, I come away then saying breath is the best team, and, and then you know. There was a couple, I think Breathitt lost a couple there, and I was like, well, you know, I, I don't know. They played a couple close ones. Uh, I forgot who it was. Was it Wolf County? Wolf played County, close. yeah, at Breathitt. Shot 14% from the three-point line that game. Yeah, so I, I was like, you know, I thought Hazard just didn't show any blemishes, and at that time, you know, hadn't lost a game at that time. And, you know, I think right now, you know, they've only lost two. One of them missed to Breathitt, but yeah. – you know, I, I think, you know, you flip a coin. I've seen times where I thought Breathitt was clearly ahead of them, and I've seen times where I thought Hazard was ahead of Breathitt. Hazard's two losses are to Caldwell Academy from Greensboro, North Carolina. That was in the Smoky Mountain Christmas Classic, and then to Breathitt yeah. County in all eight. Yeah, but, you know, wins. they're wins. So they I, would, I would argue that Hazard hasn't played a very tough schedule. No, they, they, I mean, they beat Cordia, Cordia 74 to yeah. 18, Owsley County 78 to 50, Jackson City 70 to 23. I mean, these are Buckhorn, Leslie County, Pears, uh, Wolf County, Letcher. Montgomery, Montgomery County. County. Yeah, so, so Ledger, Montgomery County. And Montgomery County is way down this yeah, year. Yeah. To, they lost their best player. Yeah. 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 I would say other than Breathitt County, they're, they're probably their most competitive games here. I mean, just looking at it was Betsy Lane, who they beat 69-51, and then they beat Leslie County 58-35. Other than that. They I was mean, only up one going into the half in that game, yes. going into the fourth quarter. I mean – they played Jenkins. They played Perry Central. They beat fifty six to forty. I, so they, they, I yeah. mean, they haven't played. No, I, no. that's what I. Th- I don't think that they've had the the toughest schedule, but. The eye test, Daryl, you've seen them play several yeah. times. Yeah. I, we watched them play head to head during the uh, off season against Prestonsburg, and we said it then: the way they guard, the, the physicality, the toughness. I got no doubt in my mind that they're one of the top two teams. I just think Breathitt County has proven a little more, and I think they're a step ahead. I don't mean Hazard can't catch them, but I All think right. Breathitt's a little right. little ahead of the game. And Perry Central, you know, the win over Perry Central, the way that they've done it dominated the Crosstown rival. I mean, that, that game never was close. I mean, yeah. uh, Perry had no chance at that game at any time. And, uh, the, you know, that, that I think Perry Central and Ledger is probably their two best wins from what you just said. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, Betsy Lane. Betsy Lane. Yeah. 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 Uh, There's one thing about it, though. It doesn't matter what these rankings say or who you play when they throw That's the ball it. up in there. And, and then on breath it. Now, what's their wins? And, uh, 11 and 4. They're eleven and four. Eleven so and four, yeah. They, yeah. And uh, two of them minus, or two of them minus Austin, or three. Yeah, two, so, two, two. Yeah, it was two. Yeah. So the uh, and you know that's but, something. Here, here's the deal. I mean, Breathitt lost to GRC, GRC and yeah. who is yeah. And you know, what are they tenth right now in the state? Something like that. Yeah, they was like six or seven. I thought they went down a little and bit. And they they lost to Lawrence County in a close one. Pines full. Uh, McLean County in a yeah. very close one, three point game. I was and at that game. That game, that game was, they got some home cooking in that mm-hmm. game out in the fourth mm-hmm. region in Owensboro. So yeah, yeah. and then they lost the paints. Well, I mean, so yeah. and the two line, losses without Sperry, you know, GRC yeah. and McLean County. Uh, yeah. the, so or with Sperry, no, yeah, 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 yeah. The the Lawrence County uh, and Paintsville, we got to see them. Yeah, I watched the Lawrence County game without him. So. You know, that was uh, neither one of them they had, they had Sperry. So. Well, I mean, Lawrence County's got a pretty good basketball team. They do, team yeah. Too. yeah. They're very yeah, scrappy. They're a really good team. Yeah. Yeah. Scrappy play Super hard. scrappy, right. yeah. But when you take a look, though, I mean, I, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, you could definitely see uh, – you could see where uh, either one of them – and then, you know, I – you know, not central, uh, hanging in there at the five spot, uh, another 14th region power. Uh, Pikeville at six, Morgan County at seven, and then Lawrence County and Tug Valley both climbing a spot, uh, you know, up to eight and nine. You know, that's – and then you look at the other receiving votes. I mean, McGoffin County is one that I think most people would think deserves to be in that top ten. And uh, then, you know, Chapmanville working their way back up. Uh, with a big win over Willing Central. Fleming County 
has been the surprise out of 16th region there. Uh, got to see Rowan County. They're very well-rounded, uh, tough group. Uh, I think, you know, they're right there at the verge of that top 10, 10, 11. And uh, the Logan team, they played a tough schedule. They still right now, you know, looking for them quality wins, getting wins over big teams. But make no mistake about it, this is a team that's going to compete for a state title. Uh, I'll tell you right game. now, if Logan had a true big, yeah, they oh, would yeah. be tough to deal with. Well, well, because Matt Hadfield, Miller. the Blanket Chip Kid, <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, Zay Sherrod, I mean, yeah. they're, the, if they had a true big, they would be – well, the Ivan Miller kid, they're developing right now, and I think he'll be I, I agree. Yeah, that's a, that's a good kid. Point. But, you know, Pikeville, you know, they're at six. You know, a lot of people, uh, Pikeville started out, you know, with a, a early loss, and I think it got a lot of people's, you know, uh, well, the not central. When not central beat Pikeville, I think a lot of people turned on Pikeville and was like, ah, you know, Pikeville, it may, it may not be their year. But I'm telling you, this Pikeville team right now, you know, I thought – Martin County, you know, to be the champs, you got to beat the champs. I thought Martin County was the one seed, but this Pikeville team might be the best team in the 15th region. I think mm-hmm. I think Pikeville's a step ahead of everybody else right now in the 15th region. I think there's so much parity that, I mean, boys, if you get past the top two or three teams on this list, throw yeah. them in a hat. I mean, I, I think there's all kind. I mean, like what we were talking about, Johnson Central, yeah. who McGolfin County just absolutely murdered. We put there. a beat down on, yeah. and then they go to George Rogers Clark Saturday. Lose by seven. And lose by seven, and yeah. it was a two point game with two minutes to go. And Austin Sloan thirty six, Braden Shepherd twenty six. I mean, yeah. I think you got four or five teams in the region yeah. got hot at yeah. the right time. That's the thing about the super region. You take a young team like Johnson Central. Mm-hmm. Who has a bad night and loses out of the district? Don't get, but then they get to the region. You never know what's going to happen. Well, when you talk teams that's going to win region, you know, the, here's the thing that you got to ask yourself. You know, can that team win three, three games? In a row. That's yeah. it. That's you know, that's they it. They got to win three in a row, mm-hmm. and you know that's the tough thing about young teams. You, you might know, get and, hot and win one. But yeah. That usually the best team is going to prevail. Uh, and that's where, you know, also Super Region is going to take away is the luck of the draw. Right. You know, and, you know, where you could face a lesser team and then, you know, make it to the championship round where yeah. you could upset somebody. Well, the games are going to get tougher as it goes on. That's basically yeah. the idea of that That's one. it. Yeah. But, you know, I, myself, I mean, I think Pikeville Martin King is a good thing is, you know, you're going to see how good they are because, you know, they got a chance to play each other if they can take care of business against Prestonsburg and Betsy Lane. Well, and I, I'll tell you the good thing about it is, Darrell, before you got pop one Martin County, is, is your two front runners probably. But then you take a team like Prestonsburg, Floyd Central, McGolf and Pike Central, any of those four teams, if they get hauled at the right time, well, I who think knows? You, you got four ahead of everybody else. I, I think Pikeville, Martin County, you two powers. And then right there with them, I think McGoffin and Pike Central. Yep. Right. You know, I either, agree with that. Either way. And then I think your next tier, you know, is where you got Prestonburg, Floyd Central, Betsy Lane, Lawrence County. Uh, the Johnson PDX Central. Basically. Yeah. yeah, Johnson Central uh, and Paints. Paints would be yeah. in that group. And then I think the rest – is after that. But yeah. then I think Cox Central and McGoffin County's got the best two players and, and in I the say, region. So, yeah, and I, uh, yeah, that's true. And, I and, mean, usually your big time players step up at big time times, right? So, I mean, you got Mr. Aiden Barnett, Jalen yeah. Rigdon. And then so. Shelby Valley, you know, they're a team that's shown they can beat anybody on any given night. Yeah, exactly so, right. You know, Coach Tyler McCoy's done a fabulous job with them. So, you know, that's. That, that would be how I would see the 15th region. I do, uh, you know, it, it's going to be interesting. I think your deepest district this year is the 58th, is, uh, is what I think is out of, you know, it's normally the 57th. This is the first year since we've been doing D&D where I would say it's another district besides, you know, the 57th. And, you know, and that's just, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, 57th is still tough, you know, but I think you got – yeah, a couple, I think McGoffin and Martin County, and then, you know, Paintsville and Johnson Central are fighting to knock off. But I think, you know, the 58th, I think everybody is within Strike three it. possessions yeah. from each other. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think there's, you know, any separation between the four, really. 
<laughs> well, we've seen that with Prestonburg and Lawrence County. Prestonburg led wire to wire until the final two minutes. And yeah. so it was a close right. game there. And then well, we saw that with Floyd Central and Prestonsburg the next yeah. few weeks later. Yeah. So much parity. Yeah. Just a and lot then of Lawrence parity. County uh, beat Floyd yeah. Central. And Floyd Central led by 14. Yeah. Well, I mean, and then you look, you got Tug Valley in there at the top 10. Had to go to overtime to beat Logan. No, yeah. So that's how close. I mean, those uh, after the top three or four, I think it's. And hey. listen, Braden Ferris and Ashton Davis right now. Are pretty they going to get? Uh, the, listen, they they have Tug Valley where, you know, I, th- I think Tug Valley is the favorite in Class A. Right I'll now. tell you right now, my favorite player on the Tug Valley team, and I, I mean, I've got to watch him a few, is Caden Hill. Yeah. I, I don't, there's something about that kid that's different. Yeah, he's a sniper, man. I, he is. Yeah, I got to go with my D&D Mountain Elite chef, Braden Ferris. Well, <laughs> <Bro, laughs> I, I mean, yeah. there's no doubt Braden is the leader yeah. of that team. Uh, Braden is a catalyst, but there's something about Caden Hill that just draws me to watch him play. He's the, he's very fun to watch. I I fell in love the other night against yeah. Logan, and then you know Ashton Davis, that young man, 100 percent toughness. You know, but you know going back to you know uh, when you sit here and look, I mean you got Breath at County right there, you know outside the fort. Do you think that Breath can knock could knock off? Ashland or Boyd County. Um, I feel like on any given night they could be they could beat anybody on that list. Um, I feel like I'm not I'm not gonna say that uh that they're, that they're better. I yeah. feel like you know Boyd County got spur you know got the Spurlock kid Ashland got Xander Carter Xander Carter you know I mean th- those kids can play I mean th- those are the Austin Sperry you know level kids yeah. and I'm not saying he's the standard or anything great player nonetheless but those kids are just as good you know Jacob Spurlock I mean yeah. I've watched him play as a sniper man yeah. can shoot it from anywhere on the court you know so you take you take a team like Brother Kane like you, I mean, y'all brought up throughout this throughout the show you know played good as a team. You know, as long as breath it doesn't get individualized, that they have their potential is straight through the roof, and uh, that's something you would see. You know, in my younger years, from freshman sophomore year, we, sometimes we was a little young and inexperienced. Got individualized. We got caught on the me attitude. Put everything aside, and we beat. I mean, Evangel Christian, at Evangel Christian. I mean, we had, you know, finals of the All A State. You know, we, we had some big runs whenever we did the we not me attitude. <laughs> I feel like that's the same difference with this team right here. This Breath of Kane team, if they put their differences aside and say, let's go win, nothing else matters, I feel like I take, I'll, take them, I'll take them by five or six against anybody on that list. Yeah, and I, I love what Sperry, you know, the biggest improvement I've seen in him is the maturity. Yeah. I think he's matured over this year, and yes. you're starting to see him as a leader now. Right, yeah. You know, so that's, you know, he's taken instead of – you know, saying, okay, you know, I'm going to go out and score 28 a game. You know, he's like, okay, I'm going to score 22, but I'm going to lead these guys. Yeah. And, you know, that's been my biggest difference with them. Is, and I think it's improved Bellamy yeah. and, yeah. you know, some of the other guys because now, you know, they're like, okay, my leader has faith in me. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing their game elevate. Yeah. And those guys, too, the, those guys aren't afraid to step into their role. Yeah. You know, Isaac and Jackson, they know that sometimes they ain't going to be the guy to go out there and score 20, and sometimes they do. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes prosperity has got so much attention on him, and yeah. they they go and take over. I mean, I see, you see Isaac against Martin County scored, what, 26, 27, something like that. Yeah. You know, Isaac has had multiple 25-plus point games. Jackson Hamilton, you know – Against Perry Central, Brother Kane beats them by 15 at Perry Central. Sperry has 25. Jackson Hamilton has 23. Kane and Gross has 20. You know, there's multiple guys on that team. Braxton Terry, you know, I can't believe I left out Braxton Terry. I mean, that kid is one of the strongest kids I've ever seen. I think uh, Jeff Honeycutt told me uh, that uh, he's never seen anybody rip it out like Braxton has. And um, – I think if me and Braxton got uh, hit against each other, the world might explode. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I really, li- I really like how the Brother Kane team's playing. You know, my cousin Kane, and I'm, I'm partial to him, but I'm, I'm so glad that he's come along. You know, a lot of those guys, like I've said, you know, a lot of those guys have been great players for years. Just had to wait their turn. You know, they practiced oh. against us for years and stuff, and then those guys had just had to wait their turn. Juniors and seniors just now started playing. Mm-hmm. And that's stuff you see at good right. college programs. Right. Right. You know, you know, guys that are juniors and seniors, and it's like, oh, that guy's a junior or senior. I've never seen him play. Well, he practiced. He practiced behind, you know, the best there was at right. that point. So 
that makes great legacies. That makes great dynasties. That makes great teams. Mm-hmm. I'll take a team that's got four kids scoring between 12 and 16 points a game oh, yeah. all day long mm-hmm. over a team that has to depend on one kid yeah. to get 35 or 40 every night. Or at least a team yeah. a team that has five players that can score. That is capable. Yeah, right. That, that it can, just yeah. makes it so much easier right, for yeah. everybody it can be, That's how my t- our teams always was. Like, you never knew. You know, one night I had 38 against Cordia. One night Sperry had 39 against Wolf. You know, you never knew who was going to score. Christian Collins, 33 against Lexington Catholic. I mean, you never knew who was going to be that guy and say, all right, give him the ball. It was anybody. And you see Morgan County just sitting there oh, yeah. sleeping at number seven. Not, not, nobody talking about them. They're I don't just know a lot sitting there Morgan sleeping. County. Sharpshooters, man. Morgan yeah. County can knock the bottom out of it. That Preston Hoskins. Preston Hoskins, yeah, yeah. good player. He's a stud. And, uh, you know, that's another reason this snowstorm kind of ticked me off is because we had – uh, we was going to find out how good Morgan County was because they was going to knock Central. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I had uh, uh, my former coach, Raymond Justice, going to call it uh, with me getting on the mic. So, uh, Snowstorm knocked us out of that. I hope that game still happens because it'll really give you a gauge where Morgan County is, where yep. Nod is, where the 14th, where the 16th is. That's a game I'd like to see. You know, they'll make up out of this. Yeah. I, I coached against the Morgan County team this spring. I mean, they, they was they're not very big, but they get out they're active. They press, they, they play a zone extended out really far. I mean, they're trapping always in the passing lanes. I mean, super active on defense and they get lots of fast break points and wide open threes on the other end. So, you know, a team that plays like that is a lot of times banger bust, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're getting picked apart and sometimes it's like, What do you do? Mm-hmm. So I feel like Morgan County can beat anybody on their best night, but they're also a team that might have a few ugly losses throughout the season. Yeah, and, and the team that you hate, you know, you hate to see, and I know it had to do with the injury, you hate to see Ledger drop off. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. they was always right there. You know, they're, they're just going to have to prove themselves, you know, without him. And, right. You know, I, I'm sure Coach Taylor will have them back up there mm-hmm. on the verge of that top ten. I mean, he's that kind of coach. But, yeah. now, Tug Valley, he, they're the surprise. And Pike Central, Jaden Stewart, uh, Jaden Reedman, you know, it's going to be hard to find a duo as good as them oh, two yeah. because them two pretty much good for 50 every night. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you know, you, you got to score over 50 to beat them because them two's going to get there. Yeah. Well, then yeah. you got to see them play in the, the little Hall kid. Was it Hall? Yes, that man, absolutely Hall. impressed me because he is the difference maker. Well, that's going to be the that's going to be the interesting thing. You know, well, Jake Sloan comes back in the lineup. You know, how does that shake things up there? Does Grant Hall stay? In the start lineup, did Jake Sloan get his spot back, or you know that that's something that Pike Central, you know, and then you got Brad Builder coming back, you know, uh, gives a little more depth at that position. So uh, you know, I, I think that you know this Pike Central team, I've been thoroughly surprised. Listen, Grant Hall, he's always been one of the top kids in that class, but you know, I I thought that you know he was maybe a year behind. That he stepped up, and this kid is making big time plays. Even you know, with his small frame, he's making a difference for this Pike Central. Well, even Jaden Stewart come up and talked to us after the game, and he said he makes us go. He said he is our guy. We trust him. He can shoot the ball. Yep. Uh, uh, did he not come up and tell us that, Tom McCoy? And listen, when your teammates are saying that about you, then that tells me. They're not going to say that if they don't trust him. No, they got a lot of faith in him. Yeah, they got, got a lot of faith in him. You got Blake it. Adams, and then you got Peyton Owens, you know, too. So, you know, I mean, that, Pike Central's got a strong seven or eight. You know, their big thing is, you know, that they played. You look at their schedule. I mean, it's a brutal schedule that they played. And, yeah. you know, they're finally starting to get some of them wins. And, you know, so I, I, I think Pike Central's going to, you know, they'll be all right. I think they're going to be – one of the favorites right there, you know, with Martin County and Pikeville. And then I think McGoffin County uh, is just a uh, slight uh, step behind them big three. And, I mean, very little, you know, behind them. But, you know, I, so I, I think that's the, the three powers. And I think Pike Central, you know, when you got two studs like that, it's going to be hard to knock them Well, out. you look at Pike Central, they had a three-point loss at Hazard. Had a two-point loss at McGoffin County. They only lost to GRC by 13. Uh, they lost by five at Pikeville. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, they played some really, really good teams and lost and they to beat some Bay County, who is the number one team on the 
mm-hmm. thing. So I think Not Central knocked him off in the DJ Begley too. The boy kid did. Yeah, Not Central beat him by three. Yeah, in yeah. the DJ Begley. Hey, that has that, yeah, that right there is probably the, the yeah. worst game I've ever seen Pike Central play in my mm-hmm. life, Coach. We was there. I mean, really? they they could not buy a basket. No, uh, it, it was the energy, <laughs> lack of energy early in the yeah, year is yeah. what I thought was a difference with Pike Central from previous years. Didn't seem to have that same motor. It uh, seems as though. They, they've kind of gotten that swag back. Yeah. They took a tough one on the chin at, at uh, McGoffin County, too. Uh, yeah. And Barnett well, game, yeah. game winner in overtime, so, yeah. I, mean, I was watching they, that game. Yeah. They've had some really – I mean, there's no such thing as a good loss, but they've no. had some good losses. Right. Well, if you're playing close, at least, you know, you know, tweak, a few, tweak a few things, you're competing, you, you'll fix it and mm-hmm. win. Yeah, so as, uh, as we're sitting here, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back for the final segment. Come right back and join us. This is Bruce Walters from Bruce Walters Kia. By now you know Kia is a great vehicle and you know they come with a 10 year 100,000 mile warranty. So why should you buy from Bruce Walters Kia? At Bruce Walters Kia, we're gonna change your oil for free for life. And what you do with that money you save is up to you. Come check out the 2022 Kia Carnival and the 2021 Kia Sorento. Only at Bruce Walters Kia in Pikeville. Or shop us online at brucewalterskia.com. If you was pushed out of the area because of loss of work in the coal industry, look no longer. Jim Marr is here for you. Jim Marr is now hiring for all positions in the coal field. Stop by their offices in Logan, West Virginia or in Wheeling, West Virginia and apply today. the new year off right by making your health a priority. Kentucky Mountain Health Alliance, Little Flower Clinic, Quantum Healthcare, and East Kentucky Chiropractic can help you do just that. We have a great staff of professionals offering a variety of services like medical, dental, behavioral health, math program, case management, chiropractic, radiology, and lab testing. Little Flower Clinic offers free transportation for Perry County patients. Call to make an appointment, 487-9505, Quantum Healthcare, 436-0711, and East Kentucky Chiropractic, 487 487- If you're injured in a car wreck, don't delay. Give me a call today, Justin Markham. Here at Markham Law Office, we will fight for you. Don't settle for a handshake and a small check from the insurance companies. Give us a call. Don't take on the big insurance companies alone. We will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. Here at Markham Law Office, you're more than a client. You're family, and we take care of family. Give me a call, Justin Markham, attorney at law. Come on down to Valley Pharmacy where the staff treat you like family from the second you walk through the doors. Valley Pharmacy. Come on down to Valley Pharmacy where the staff treat you like family from the second you walk through the doors. Valley Pharmacy will take care of all your pharmaceutical needs. Valley Pharmacy wants to wish the shelf. We are back here now at Glenn Martin Hammond's office. We got Coach K, Bryce Hoskins, I'm Daryl McCoy, and we got Coach May. Coach May made it all the way through the show to the final quarter. And uh, you know he he's not he's not Kobe down the clutch. Yet. <laughs> I, am, I am I am no master no, for he, sure. He's done an amazing job tonight. The uh, you got a little. Uh, uh, so, sometimes you turn the ball over, but yeah. you got to make up for it. You got to finish strong. Yeah, there so, you go. So, yeah, there it's about go. coming through in the clutch. Hey guys, I, I got called into this job about three o'clock today. <laughs> and, uh, never did it before, so I, I'm I'm learning. Yeah, we see uh, Logan uh, Bartram said uh, Knott County did beat Perry and girls. They're one and one. So uh, you know that right there just shows you know not you know they're right there. Mm-hmm. You know, and then. Uh, you see Sue Cat Lester tuning in. 
as Sue Cat says, uh, hit that like and share button, and uh, it's always a party when Sue Cat's in the house. Then Kevin Sharp says, Pike Central, very dangerous. If they get one more uh, score, said then J and J said they constantly play D and play hard. Said just one score away uh, from being one of the top two teams, and uh, you know they could very well have that once they get. The, Jake Sloan was starting to be. He had, I think, 18 and 19, two games in a row there before he got injured. So if they can get that from him, then, you know, that, that's going to be. And then, you know, if you can take and get Grant Hall scoring you 10 plus a game, I mean, and Peyton Owens, you know, right that's, there with double double. That's the key right there. Peyton Owens, I think he's leading the state in field goal percentage, maybe the most versatile defender. In a, in a region, it can guard interior, exterior. Uh, Peyton Owens, I think, is going to be the catalyst for a Rupp Arena run. But I'm telling you right now, Pike Central, this Pike Central team is, I mean, not Pike Central, not Central. Yeah. I still, at the beginning of the year, I thought not Central was clearly the best team in the 14th. I mean, it's been, I've seen three different teams at three different times this year, I said was the, clearly the best team. I thought at some point not was at the beginning of the year. And then I thought uh, that Breathitt was in the middle. And then I thought Hazard. And now, you know, I think Breathitt may be taken back on top. But this not Central team, you know, they're just well-rounded with Drake Sloan, Jaden Huff. I mean, you know, they're, they're tenacious on defense. And one thing, you know, they're going to have is energy every night. Casey Huff is going to yeah. have them out there playing. So, you know, that, that's the team that I think is kind of the X factor Law and right in the middle of that top ten. I think they're a team that, you know, on any given night can knock off one of the top five. Yeah. You know, I, so. I, I agree. I think Knott County uh, on, on a good night is as good as anybody. Yeah, that's, that's the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but we just got some, uh, some breaking news coming in. The, uh, we will be doing the Hatfield and McCoy tournament this year, but uh, finally just now got the rosters, uh, the games. So these haven't oh, been. I'm excited. I love the Hatfield McCoy yeah, shootout. They haven't been released yet. That's in my back door, by the way, down McCoy. It is. Uh, Williamson and Belfry Middle School will play. So got a big rivalry game starting out on Friday. Westside versus Phelps. Really good game. Tug Valley versus Pike Central. Oh, Shannon okay. Braden Ferris versus Jalen Rigdon. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, then uh, you got the rivalry game closing out Friday night, Mingo Central versus Belfry. Yeah. So, closing that out. Then on Saturday, Chapmanville Middle versus Pikeville Middle. Yeah. So, uh, then Westside versus Shelby Valley. Mm -hmm. South Charleston versus Pike Central. Then you got Scott versus Belfry. Mingo Central versus Prestonsburg. And then Tug Valley versus Martin County in the game that everybody has been wanting to see for years. The, 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 the most anticipated game of this will be that final game when them two communities have always wanted to play, but they wouldn't play each other. The Hatfield McCoy has got it done. The last time that I remember Martin County playing Tug Valley was when Tyler was a senior at Tug Valley. So... Yeah. Tyler Mate. Yeah. So he graduated in 16, I think. Yeah. So that's been seven years. Yeah. So, so I'm, oh, that'll, that'll, be a, that'll be a dog fight, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that you can guarantee standing room only. In but I think, I think Martin County's too athletic for it. If they show up and play. And then, you know, Prestonsburg, Mingo Central. Yeah, that, that's going to be a, a game, you know, that, you know, I. This, this is a big stage for Prestonsburg. That when you want to know the kind of effect that Chase Parsley has, uh, you know, had during his coaching is you know starting to put Prestonsburg in platforms like this well, play, and, and that's what you do. You know, I mean, and that's a that's a pretty good Mingo Central team. I've seen Mingo Central really. Yeah, yeah good. they can definitely. I've seen them really good and really bad. Yeah. I mean, they they shoot a lot of threes, and if they're hot, they're going to be a tough out. You know, oh, they can beat them and, and have home court advantage. Aiden Burke is a highlight reel. Yeah, we've seen him do some amazing things. And, and even more important, you know, like I said, Coach Parsley, you know, putting Prestonsburg on big stages like this, you know, this is uh, this is what you want, you know, especially you know if you're a kid like Braxton Keeley, you want a big well, stage, you know, this is big time, and then you and take 
Uh, look at the other kids, you know, none of them has ever played on a stage like this. So to have that many people there, I mean, this is going to be a crazy atmosphere. Will the moment be too big? Will Mingo Central have the home court advantage? You always know West Virginia teams are going to get the benefit of the doubt there. And then what you're going to have, though, you're going to have all the you're going to have all the Tug Valley Martin County fans rolling in yep. and watching the Prestonsburg Mingo game. Oh yeah, big time. And the Williamson Fieldhouse. And then and it's an awesome place to play. This is the game to watch too. South Charleston versus Pike Central. That's the game three of that day. South Charleston, one of the top teams in West Virginia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, versus Pike Central. That'll be a good one. find out how good Pike yeah. Central is. So, uh, it, it definitely going to be interesting there. And uh, we definitely want to give a big shout out. I want to thank Jared and uh, Mark for always choosing d d as their go-to media streaming outlet. So, uh, as we also uh, coming down, as we're going down through the last break here, um, you know, want to uh, give congratulations to a couple people. Emily Nice, a girl you may know, 1,500 career points at Breath of Yeah, she's a great, uh, great player. Yeah, the, uh, so Emily, do you, is she a senior or a junior? No, she's a junior, I believe. Uh, she she used to go to that uh, the Riverside Christian School. Yeah. She, she switched over to Breathitt. You know, they, Riverside used to have a pretty good uh, girls team, but she switched over to Breathitt. She can knock the bottom out of it. Great leader, great point guard, can handle the ball. She um, Brandon Hayes has got them Breathitt County girls rolling this year. You know, just had a you know, horrible loss of Michael Canoy, you know, a freshman yeah. girl on that team. Uh, she's a great player, and I we I send prayers to her and her family, you know, because of that injury. And uh, but no, nonetheless, I mean that's the second starter breath that's lost this year to injury. You know, another one, Maddie Heck, she's out for the year. But um, Brother County, you know, they got a they got a young core, so it's going to be next girl up over there. So I look for them. To, they'll probably win the district. You know, they kind of had the best of Wolf County in Jackson City this year. So uh, you know, congrats to Emily. Uh, know her mom and dad very well. Great people. It's uh, a lot of buckets. Yeah, it is. 1,500 points. It's a, it's a lot. Yeah, so as you're sitting here looking, uh, you see Xander Carter says uh, there, he scored his 2,000th career point just a junior. Wow. Yeah. That's Will wild. he score 3,000? Mm. Midway through the season, say what he ends up with, 2,200. He'll probably Maybe. score what two hundred and fifty more points yeah. by the end of this year. 22, 2300. That's going to be close, right? right. So right he, he's going to have to. He's going to have to get eight hundred, you know, yeah. next year. You know, thirty so, games. You know, that's averaging. You know, anywhere but the 23, 25, yeah. 23 to twenty five. Yeah, twenty five. Yeah. Uh, well, if there's one system he can do it in, yeah. it's that Ashland. Right. <laughs> yeah, he can do it. Now, Xander Carter's yeah. a baller for Oh man, he's good. The surprise for Ashland's been Tyson Lalonde. That young man stepping up. Mm-hmm. I mean, great I, player. Yeah, I never. I always knew Tyson was good. But I never dreamed that he would be, you know, as good as he is yeah. this year. Yeah. But uh, he's having a great year. Uh, one kid that knows what it's like to score three thousand. Aiden Barnett, yeah. three thousand points. Aiden Barnett, uh, you know, he's it. The Perry Ellis of uh, yeah, basketball. he is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's Alex there. Crusoe. Yeah, he's been there what seven? The seventh season. Seventh yeah. season, three thousand points. Wow. And this kid, multiple fifty-point games along the way. I mean, uh, if and, and just think, I mean, that right there, three thousand points. Imagine if they would have had any kind of postseason success right up really. to this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, My son compared and said he's the LeBron James of the fifteenth region. You you know, you look at LeBron and he just well, he's just so big and strong. Well, That's, you know what? He is big and strong. You can't take that from him. That don't take away from the success. That's Aiden, the perfect comparison. Aiden Barnett plays just like LeBron James. Yeah. That's what Isaiah says. He's a it's, LeBron James of the 15th uh, region. And I, I get that comparison. When he gets going down, he'll in transition or – Below that high school three point line, that's when he's most dangerous, and and that's when he's getting most of those buckets is downhill, transition or one to two bounces. And I tell you, he is so strong. And I I, I told Daryl, his control of his body on the fly is just amazing. How he can gather himself and look like he's going a hundred mile an hour, and then be in such control. I mean. He's just a hard, he's a hard Well, style. they listen, before we move on, I know we're getting late into the night. Uh, I hear a lot of teams game planning saying, well, Barnett likes that one-foot floater. So they, they tell their guys, listen, stand in front of him and take that charge, get him in foul trouble early. But somehow Barnett 
always avoids whether it's a, a, so off that one foot floater. Guy's trying to stand in, but he's able to contort, move, and finish. Really good finisher for a guy that's built like Barnett because he's he, he don't necessarily have that basketball build, uh, but he's got he he is a player. Yeah, Aiden Martin's a great player. I yeah. played against him a few times, you yeah. know, in high school and middle school and stuff. And uh, he controls his body really yeah. well. That's one thing I know. And everybody wants to see him as a three-point shooter, but I know he had twenty-something uh, points the other night against Pike Central before he even attempted a three. Right. I mean, the kid, the kid gets downhill. He likes the contact. He gets up to the basket, and his three-point shot just comes along with it. Well, hey, you're, you're sagging back. He's going to step up and put it in your face. You That's know? right. So he's a great player. I mean, I love watching Aiden Barnett play. Big time. His, uh, his uncle is Ty Williams, actually from Azle County. Oh. Uh, my uncle used to coach him. He was on that last Azle County uh, district championship team all, in 2010. My, all the connections there, McCoy. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. Uh, yeah. My uncle Tyson coached on that team. Yeah. yeah. This guy's definitely an asset. Right. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, we could definitely uh, use Bryce Hoskins yeah. here, Coach. Yeah. The, uh, see, uh, Kevin Sharp says Martin Pikeful to me are one and two. Said so Tanya Johnson says Pikeful has very, uh, very even scoring, and any player can step up at any time. Yeah. I agree. You know, Eli yeah. Johnson right now, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people look at him as the go to scorer. But, you know, I mean, on any given night, you know, they could have two other guys yeah. maybe 20. Right. Know, so. That that's the, who do you guard with them? Yeah, you know because you know Eli, you you know what he's going to do. Yeah, you know but you know who's the next guy? And what Pipeful does so well, Daryl, is if you look at Eli Heath, um, um, Fitzer, uh, yeah Fitzer, uh, you look at what they do. They shoot a high percentage. Yeah, and uh, so uh, again, they're very disciplined, and they take advantage of mismatches. One night it can be Fitzer, one night it can be Eli. And they are two big time players that uh, will be playing at the next level. Yeah. And Heath is a John Stockton. Oh, man. Love Heath. Yeah. Yeah. So Steve smart. Kerr. Yeah. yeah, Steve Kerr. There you go, John bro. Stockton. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, they're got all the comparisons up in yeah. here tonight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we got LeBron you know, James and John Stockton. Yeah. <laughs> you got to compare it to somebody. Right, I mean, yeah. We're not saying they're ever that good, but we're yeah. just saying that. Oh, yeah. Heath, Heath Gerald's a great player. He's yeah. just so, I mean, he is mm-hmm. mentally. He, he is. He's the head of the game. He's yeah, smart. Heath Trail's a great player. I played yeah. against him that, that 2022 uh, LA uh, State Championship. He's a great player. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Hughes is a kid that can give you 20 a game on yeah, any given yeah. night if you let him. And, you know, Angst. He, yeah, Angst is the, yeah. he's kind of the mismatch nightmare for you. Yeah. you know yeah. I mean, he's the long athletic kid that, yeah. you know, uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna to be tough. It's gonna to be an uphill battle for anybody to knock them off. And boys, yeah. Elijah's not a slouch as a coach no. either. Oh, no, no, Elijah's he's a, the opposite of a slouch. Yeah, he's the opposite. Yeah, he's the opposite yeah, of a slouch. Yeah. I mean, that guy can coach. He's smart. Great player. He was a great player too. I remember that's another guy I remember yeah. watching in the Sweet Sixteen when I was a little kid. Unbelievable. Yeah. Great player. Yeah. Kevin steps at defense is something that stands out for both teams. Pikeful protects the rim. Martin County is long and pressures out on the perimeter. Uh, Said uh, Jesse Miller says not was up uh, close to twenty on Pike Central. Pike Central cut it to three at the end of the game. Uh, like you said, the younger guys are stepping up, playing for Pike Central. It's different than uh, AAU because a lot of times you are playing against older, more physical players outside uh, the middle school AAU teams in the area. Uh, Chase Parsley said beat them twice that year. Uh, Mike Perry said huh. Beberg. I don't know what you're talking about. I think yeah. he was talking about when he said that uh, uh, Martin County beat Toad uh-huh. Valley. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right. what he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. So I the, read that uh, comment. And then uh, the uh, and then said uh, Peberg will be uh, Mingo by 25. Mike Perry says. Come on now, don't. <laughs> the uh, I, I, that that one. I mean, they got it to do because you know if there's if there's a team that don't match up well. You know, I mean, that they got three dudes that, you know, are big dudes that attack the rim. Well, you, know? you got, uh, I'll tell you right now, you got the Thomason kid that can get hot and really shoot yep. the ball, uh, Porter, and then uh, the big kid in the middle, uh, golly, is that? Ross. No, uh, not, Ross is the dirty work guy. And then you got Aiden Burke, but that, uh, the fifth starter, and I cannot remember his name. The, uh, I, I don't know uh, right off, but, you know, either way, that Hatfield McCoy is one you want to buy a ticket for. But uh, Kylie Gayhart scored her 1,500th point before getting ejected at Betsy Lane. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, so she celebrated big. Yeah. The, uh, uh, I, if you've ever watched Kylie Gayhart, 
I mean, the kid is special. She's, she's one phenomenal. Of, yeah, she's, she's one of them girls that you just love watching because yeah. she's energy from the start to the end. Yeah. She's a ball of energy, and she's thriving under Coach Megan Huff. Yeah. And then uh, you go through uh, Addie Smith uh, had 38 points, 12 threes, and Mingo Central 66-64 wow. win over Mount Mission. You know, Addie Smith, she's the player that, you know, don't get the recognition she deserves up there on Minor Mountain. But, you know, you talking about just pure score? I don't know if there's a better pure score in the in period in the mountain. 12 threes is lining it up. Yeah, then Addie Smith. You know, Shaylin Steele from Russell mm-hmm. might be the, the other girl. But, you know, Addie Smith's a girl every night you know is going to have 25 plus. It's every night. Yeah. And uh, then Alice Lloyd. Check this out. Signs Alyssa Allen, gets Katie Markham committed, and offers Lakeland Williams. So three Martin County Cardinals could be at Alice Lloyd, could be at Pippa Passes next year wow. if they all decide to play there. Well, no surprise because they did that in 2019. They signed multiple players uh, from Martin, no, from Martin uh, County. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, um, 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 Kristen Isaacs, Madison uh, yeah, Thompson. Madison, Maddie Thompson. Yeah. So they got uh, two off that team. Yeah, they, it seems like there was another one, too. I could be wrong. Yeah. But uh, then uh, if you've got them three, Floyd Central, they got uh, Katie Drew Moore, Kennedy Harville. Yeah. And uh, then uh, now Al Sloyd did lose a big piece uh, over uh, first semester break there. Uh, Kenzie Maynard entered the transfer portal. Ooh. And, uh, you know, Let's just say I, I don't know if Kenzie wants it out, but she will be clo- uh, playing close to home on a full ride. So uh, you know, definitely something to keep an uh, eye out for Kenzie. Uh, couldn't be more happy. You know, yeah. I, I hope you know she has she's been hampered by injuries. So I hope she has right. a final in, uh, great ending to her career. And uh, then uh, Scotty Dana says, I don't know about Pike County Schools on Friday. Well, we appreciate you, Scotty. And uh, then uh, making sure I didn't. Oh, else Lawrence County girls right now uh, on a skid, Coach. The uh, Lawrence County girls are really struggling right now. They got to find a way to get back out of the, you know, out yeah. of the depths. There, there's some games that I said, look, did you know Lawrence County? Because you've been doing so many games. I said, Daryl, Lawrence County lost this game by three. So wait a minute. No, <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah, it had to be a misprint. But indeed, they did. Lawrence County somehow is kind of. Man, they just kind of taken a, uh, yeah, a, a left turn, a left turn somewhere, and not playing up to what we thought uh, their capabilities are. Yeah, I, I, I really think Linda Feltner will get oh, yeah. back no you know, on track. You know, they love her as a coach. Yeah, you know, it's just one of them middle of the season. Yeah. You know, I mean, it happens. You know, but that, they got the they got the pieces. Yeah, yeah, that's the more important thing. But you know, then uh, you know when you take a look, you know. Uh, Floyd Central, they beat uh, uh, Floyd Central beat them, and then I think it was Pike Central maybe that upset them. Uh, they've lost two games that you wouldn't think they would have lost in the last little bit. On the other hand, Pike Central is a team that's on the rise right now. You know, with Hannah May, uh, with her sister, with Bowman, yeah, uh, with the Hess. I mean, this Pike Central team is showing to be a team that can upset. You know, the top. You know, three, four. Yeah. You know, in the region, this Pike Central team, uh, they've moved their way up to where they, they're bidding for the top five teams in the region. Yeah. I mean, they've got that good. I agree. Yeah. So uh, then, let me make sure we didn't uh, get anything. Boyd County girls took one two A state title. Congratulations to Audrey Biggs and the crew up there. Uh, let's see. And it's Smith, Aiden Barnett. Uh, we mentioned Johnson Central losing, and uh, oh, the throwback game, Christensburg Betsy Lane game is rescheduled, coach, for February 17th at the Dome. Christensburg versus Betsy Lane. That game will be played uh, as it is a district game, but it won't be played till February 17th, and it's a 2:30 start time. Wow, early tip, boys. Yeah, and I think girls play at one. And I don't know for sure, but I think it may uh, take place of that Belfry game. Uh, uh, the person we're scheduled to go to Belfry. I don't know for a fact. I haven't, but I think it's that 17th. If Coach Parsley's tuning in, he can let us know. I I think it takes so that Preston game out. Kinda, they've got two games in, right? 
That probably that probably would do it, I, but I don't know that to be certain. I, I'm sure Coach Parsley is working to work to make those games up. It just seems like I remember that Belfry game was on the 17th. Yeah, I, I, I could I, be wrong. I hope the goodness that they're able to make that Belfry game up. You know, yeah. at least one of them. At least one of them. Get, yeah. yeah. You know, the, uh, uh, you know I, I just selfishly, my son's wanting to play against Belfry. Right. You know, so, the, uh, would like to see that game uh, made up. But uh, I, I think uh, that's, that does all, besides our all-A predictions. So, uh, in the all-A uh, 15th region tomorrow night, Pikeville, Prestonsburg, Betsy Lane, Martin County. We'll uh, give Coach May first. Who, which, who you got? Uh, let's go with Pikeville Martin County. You got Pikeville Martin County? Yeah. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay with Coach May. I think Pikeville Martin County will uh, will pull it out. I think it'll be two hard games, but I still think that those teams are just older and more more experienced. Um, but that plays a big toll in uh, later tournament games. And Betsy Lane upset Martin County, you can guarantee they're not going to catch them off guard this time. No. You know, no. uh, you know, they're going to come in ready and not overlook Betsy that's, Lane. That's one of the main reasons, because Betsy Lane did beat Martin County earlier in the year, and I think yep. Martin County has got a little, like, a fire yeah, they've yeah. Got, they'll have a fire to prove a point, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, Daryl, you know, I always, you know, I hate doing these picks with uh, Prestonsburg. Uh, I, listen, it's a tall mountain to climb for Prestonsburg to get get to where Pipeful's at right now. Pipeful's had that system in place for three or four years, and and they know exactly what to do. Coach Parsley is about a year and a half into his system, doing a tremendous job. Can Prestonsburg get it done? They're on a six-game win streak. Yeah, I was going to mention that six-game win streak, longest in fourteen years. And when's the last time Prestonburg's beaten in one season Shelby Valley on the road, Floyd Central, and Paintsville? Has that happened in, in my lifetime? I don't know. So congratulations to Prestonburg and Coach Parsley getting it done. Uh, listen, uh, taking everything out, uh, Pikeville should get it done. Size, experience, been on the expo floor for countless times. I'll tell you what I am going to go with, though. I want to go with Betsy Lane over Martin County. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so I'm, I'm going to go with Betsy Lane over Martin County. And I know that's going to make Billy Davis really, really mad at me because, believe me, I, I love Martin County and I love what they're doing, but I think Betsy Lane could have some mismatches. Uh, they, uh, uh, well, I th that's hard. I, I don't see that happening. Uh, you know, I, I think, although I think, you know, Betsy Lane is, and, and coming into the year, I thought Betsy Lane was going to be one of them yeah. teams, top four or five teams. I, st I still the, think, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, you know, I, I think Martin County, you know, I tell you, if Betsy Lane gets them, they better get them right now. They're yeah. still learning to that's play with Peyton Davis as the point guard. Yeah, without yeah. Duff. Duff. That, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Is Duff out? Yeah. Duff's yeah. out. He's out for the AC year. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's so, towards AC. Well, it, it, it's a different, completely different team, you know, I think. You <clears> know, but, Bryson Dawes has been playing lights out for an eighth grader too. I mean, he's stepping up and playing big minutes in Peyton. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, listen, I, I think you know Duff and Peyton Davis both bring great things. You know, they're both great in their own rights. You know, uh, you know Peyton Davis. You know, Duff is that explosive mismatch. You know, Peyton Davis is the kid that you know he's a competitor. He's right. a leader. You know, he. You know, there's. Uh, so they both bring great things. Either way it goes, just you know, Duff was a huge loss. You know, it it would have been very nice. He was the mismatch nightmare last year that Pikeville didn't have an answer for. You know, in region. Yeah. You know, so that's a big loss. But you know, I I, I really think though that you know uh, Martin County, you know, they're, they're going to come out to prove a point. And then you know if you know this isn't a game that Prestonsburg can't win. Oh, I agree but with that. I, I, they do have – I think they've got yeah, a team. They, they do some stuff, you know, really good that, you know, may be the weakest – if you can find weak points in Pikeville, they do some stuff that Pikeville, you know, is weak at. But, you know, when you got Charlie Fitz or when you got Eli Johnson, I mean, Ian Knox, that's a lot of length, you know. But I'll say this. Up top, I think Braxton and Jackson play good enough defense that they might make it a little bit tough on Pikeville to get to those guys. Yeah, it, well, it, I think Braxton, Braxton and Jackson are as two as as good as any two in the region that I saw 
of playing the basketball at the top. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I do think the backcourt, I think you're spot on with that. I think Chris Burke backcourt is, I mean, one of the best defensively. Right. Uh, in not just the region, but in the mountains. And But when you take and uh, look, you know, can they deny the ball from 15? That's it. You know, that's it. You know, and if one thing, you know, one thing that you hope is that Connor Napier – uh, and Caden Allen, and even coming off the bench, uh, Caden Aaron, you got um, Ethan Farrell back. You know, you hope that Fitzer don't in- have that intimidation factor over them where they grew up playing with him. Right. You yeah. Know, so, you know, that, that's the thing that you that be, you want to see. Be fun to watch. Yeah, it should, should be a uh, fun game to watch. That one's at 630. The uh, first game, Martin County, Betsy Lane is at 5. And then in that game right there, too, you know, one, one that you want to keep an eye on, you know, who benefits the most from the weather delays? You know, well, obviously, I think Betsy Lane benefits because, you know, they get uh, Cameron Pente, uh, more time with Pente healing. I think that, you know, Pikeville gets it because I think if this game was played when it's supposed to, I don't know that you would have got E.B. Walters in the lineup right. at the time. But now I think EB will be healthy enough to go. Uh, and then I think that for Prestonsburg, Ethan Farrell and Brian Hobart both uh, coming back. The big thing, Ethan Farrell coming back uh, for Mono, you know, now that he's got, you know, a couple practices under his belt. And then you got Brian Hobart uh, getting at shoulder more healthy. You know, so I think them three definitely benefit from the weather delay now. Uh, you know, Martin County, you could also say, gets a couple more practices with Peyton Davis running the show. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, and then uh, all A state tournament, Breathitt County. Danville Christian. You got Danville Christian? Yep. Got Danville it. Christian in the first round. Uh, who's the 15th guy? What region? I don't know. I'm not sure. Not yeah. sure. I had Breathitt got a, win, a chance to win the first round. Oh, yeah. I, I would say Breathitt might be the favorite. Um, yeah. Danville Christian, the top, well, they're top 25 team in the state. Um, they've kept the same team for about the last two to three years because I remember my junior year going and playing them at Williamsburg and that little that little summer all A thing they mm-hmm. do down there. We we played them over there. They got a boy. I mean, seven foot two center. Uh, got another guard, uh, sit like six four. Got a blonde head boy. I can't remember his name. Shoots the lights out. That those boys. Every one of them was sophomores whenever we played them my junior year and beat them by about 30. You know, they was young, we was older, and uh, more experienced. So, uh, I think this is a good matchup coming for Breathitt County. A good test down low for Terry and Gross, you know, having to guard the, the seven-footer down there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, something, a task that I always had to take serious, you know, keep those guys pushed out from the basket. Keep those guys around the free throw line, you're fine. Um, you know, Breathitt, um going to have to match up defensively play this game. I think that they're not going to have a problem scoring on them. Uh, matching up defensively is going to be the key for the Bobcats to win that game. And uh, I think Breathitt comes in as the favorite, and I think they're going to move on to the second round. I'll tell you, any time a mountain team goes to plays in any kind of state tournament, we all root for them. I know yeah, that. me too. Uh, yeah, I always did. Just got word uh, Chapmanville and Madison's game is on tomorrow night. So, middle school action, you're going to see Chapmanville Middle versus Madison. Yeah. And uh, we'll try to keep you updated on some of the other games going on around the area and whether they're canceled or go. Johnson Central is canceled. Johnson right? Central Pines yeah. Boy is canceled. Is canceled. So, 15th winner gets Caverna. So, Caverna. Yeah. Caverna. So, plays Caverna. Yeah. And then uh, we see Lindsey Stevens says, somebody get Bryce Hoskins and Coca-Cola. <laughs> He's tired. So, uh, I'm not there yet. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as uh, and Robert Wallace says, sure hope they get a play. We do too. Hope it gets the play. Hope everybody gets out, supports their local team. We appreciate you guys, everybody sticking around. Appreciate Coach May on the board. Appreciate Bryce Hoskins. Bryce, yeah. hopefully you can start coming oh, in. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Short yeah. ride over here, I don't care a bit, too. Yeah, giving us some uh, 14th region knowledge. And, uh, guys, uh, again, we appreciate you guys at home tuning in as well as their sponsors. Till next time. Watch this, Coach, man. So long and good night. Now, is that that's money? Money. <laughs>